everybody, and welcome to the Liberator Podcast. Got myself and Russell Hunter here today. No, no Sam. Sam. No Sam. But we've got some replacements for Sam. We're doing a kind of a, a podcast collaboration here. We have the guys from Carpe Fide joining the show. Welcome to the show, guys. What's up? Yo, yo. <laughs> What's pod, up? And a, yo, pod, yo. La, a pod collaboration? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's pretty good. Uh, yeah. Did you, just, did you just coin that? Yeah, don't, absolutely. Don't encourage. This is the magic. Don't ruin awesome. the magic. Okay. I, I, just really pretty clever right off the bat there. So. <laughs> I can't even say it, but podlaboration. Is that what? Pod, podlaboration. Yeah. yeah. So this isn't the yeah. first time we've done this, but it's the first time we've done it with you guys. Yeah. Which means it's the first best time you've done this. Yeah, this is the best time we're ever going to do this. So far. <laughs> so anyway, so you guys are Carpe Fide. Seize the faith. Carpe Fide. Seize I like how faith. you you have it there for all of us that don't know the Latin. Yeah. You put seize the faith there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. good. It, awesome. it was funny because some, uh, who was it? I think it was, I forget who it, it was. Gabe Wrench. It was either Gabe Wrench or Toby Sumter. We, we oh, sent them some Toby. stuff. And they're like, you know, that's the wrong Latin declension, right? And I'm like, look, <laughs> Dude. I haven't gotten there in my homeschooling yet. Like, my kids, <laughs> my oldest kid's eight, okay? <laughs> and then people <laughs> like me are like, like, what is declension? <laughs> yeah yeah i had to look it up yeah and then i was like oh wow he's right and i'm like but it doesn't matter carpe fide sounds better yeah and you and printed it, it already and it's done we did it's, yeah. we're, we're moving forward yeah we like to say that we have the uh the wrong declension but the right theology yeah that's what matters <laughs> nice yeah. put that on a mug no <laughs> i you know i don't want to go into babylon b too much but what does my mug say it says something like uh decaf is heresy or decaf condemned is heresy yeah, yeah. and then i have a shirt that <laughs> says what does it say that shirt says on the front that at the top i don't know your shirt. it says like uh r- wrong like something wrong but morally correct oh yes F- factually wrong morally fact, correct factually yeah. wrong but morally factually wrong, correct morally right. yes, that's babylon b that, that's Alexandra Ocasio Cortez. Yep, is, that's her quote. Yeah, quote. but in the <laughs> podcast, if I wear that shirt, it just says "factually wrong." <laughs> <laughs> so the whole time I'm talking, the kids in the bottom. Oh, yeah. that's not good. Did, did you? Yep. Do we have one up where it's like that? Do we have one? No, because I think we were recording, oh. and then you said something like, "Oh, I discovered it." Yeah. You were like, "You do? You, <laughs> you just have factually wrong across your chest." Yeah. And, I, and then I had to like stand up and show everybody my belly, morally right. <laughs> Yeah. You know, and, and Babylon B is not it's embarrassing. Oh, always so morally right. Yeah. All right. So for, <laughs> for those of our listeners, uh, some of them may have seen some of your episodes, the recent one what you did with Dusty Devers. But for anyone who doesn't know you guys, just introduce yourselves, uh, both of you guys individually, and then your, your show and kind of what you guys are about. Rock, paper, scissors? No. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm Justin Gruber, and uh, um, where was I going with this? That's awesome. And I'm Jesse That's Gruber. Right. <laughs> sign, me, sign me up. So, I'll <laughs> Subscribe now. Uh, so we uh, we do Carpe Fide. More than that, we we're both uh, pastors, local pastors uh, at the same church, and we're both brothers, and we're both both biological and spiritual brothers. Um, and that makes for really interesting elder meetings, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Closeness breeds contempt, so it can be very interesting. Yeah, <clears throat> a slight disagreement gets. <clears throat> well, we work through things. Yeah, and that's great. Um, but uh, we we have been geez podcasting for. Just over a year, yeah. We've nice. Been, we're both full 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 time employees, so we have a weird pastoral situation. Uh, I work for UPS. I drive one of the brown trucks. Uh, that's what I do. Nice. And uh, I'll let you tell what you do. But uh, then we also <laughs> <laughs> we also pastor in a in a very much um, bivocational, but pretty much actually it's just mostly vocational and then ministerial. So it's actually kind of two separate things altogether. Um, and we're, we're very grateful for the opportunities that we've had, um, not just pastoring, but also with, uh, with the podcast, we've gotten, geez, we've gotten to know way too many people that it's been awesome. Yeah. That's so encouraging. Very true. And I'm Jesse. I am Justin's brother, both spiritually and biologically. It's a true story. <laughs> I'm a nurse. I'm an emergency department nurse. Um, uh, wow. So that's 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 been fun this past couple of years. Yeah, aren't we supposed to start like praising you and calling you a warrior? And uh, he's, he's uh, my you, hero. I'm a healthcare <laughs> hero. Yeah, you, you dance. Do you ever YouTube dance? Uh, you know, in your scrubs. I, well, I I don't have TikTok because it's 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 communist. Chinese, but communist. but um, Chinese. but I have recorded. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the <laughs> delivery people are also big time pandemic heroes, right? 
That's correct. We we yeah. may we keep the we we're both front going. lines. Yeah. yeah, we're both front line workers. We're both we yeah. not all heroes wear capes. Yeah, <laughs> more essential than all the other non-essential people out there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I was more essential. I didn't feel essential, but it was fine. Yeah. <laughs> people need their stuff. Yeah. People do. Boy, boy, and boy did, did everybody that. order so much stuff. Yeah, <laughs> it was ridiculous. It's like everybody's doing better since mm-hmm. the pandemic because how much online shopping goes on. Yeah. yeah. For real. So, so, so UPS and a pastor and a nurse and a pastor and also podcasters and podcasters. Yes. Yes. Um, wow. Busy. I've got, I'm, I'm, I'm also married. You're, are you married as well? Yes. Our wives are great. They're two different people. They're two different people. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for clearing that up. Yeah. We're <laughs> important. We're Biological important. brothers. Yeah. Wives, plural. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so my, and my wife is, uh, is also an, a, a nurse. She's an ICU nurse. Wow. Very good. And uh, so she's, and she's amazing. And so, geez, we've been married for too long. That's not Wait, that's, that's not, not how you're supposed to say that. <laughs> wait, wait, too wait, long wait, for wait, you wait. to remember. This is where I come in. My <laughs> wife is also amazing, and we—I just wish I was married to her longer than I've been married. <laughs> that's, exactly, that's exactly what you know, you're supposed to say. Thanks for thanks for solving my problems. Yeah, she's <laughs> going on. Um, yeah, I can't even do that. I'm not even doing the math right, uh, right now. You're at 16. Yeah, you'll be coming up, up on 16, 16, 16 oh, yeah. in June. That's where I'm yeah. at. 16 in June. Whoa, yeah. nice. Whoa, Yo. Yeah. All right. And so, yeah, it's cool. awesome. Uh, we have, we have, I have three beautiful children, and and that's they're glorious little kids learning and growing in the gospel. Mm. Every day is a new experience. Yeah. So, well, I don't know. I, I don't know. I got 12, 10, and six. How about you, Russ? Are you about the same? Yeah. Nine, six, three. So we were, oh, wow, we're so close. We didn't have our, we didn't have everything together. We we went to this church that told us we should wait. I'm just kidding. We waited. We were sinners. <laughs> we waited too long. We waited too long. I was trying to blame it on my prior church. Pro- probably can't do that. But uh, no, yeah, we waited a little you, long. You can. We don't know. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, do whatever you want to do. We're, no, we're, we're just, rolling with you. We just realized that whenever we had been married for like five or six years, and I was like getting, I was in a doctoral program, so it's got like, and she was working, and I was kind of. We did the whole thing like we're we're supposed to put it off, but then now we are like, what? We were so stupid. Why did we do that? And why didn't we? I, we kind of thought, why didn't anyone in like our Sunday school class rebuke us for like not being fruitful and multiplying and having being blessed with children? Like it was yeah. it was okay oh, that I was going to get a PhD instead of a child. So <laughs> worth we, it, we, no man ever. So I just decided yeah. to not get that and start getting kids but yeah we just have nice. well done <laughs> three here yeah two up there anyways <laughs> getting to abortion abolitionism here yeah um and, and talking to you guys uh leading up to the show you guys told me you are somewhat new to abolitionism and so why don't you guys go ahead and say uh, just talk about uh how you encountered the movement and then what's kind of what what drew you to the abolitionist movement rock paper scissors <laughs> I, I went first last time oh so it's my turn hey yeah um, well, uh, I would say that I, I first heard, I first heard of the abolitionist movement, um, probably just through some, uh, through some social media circles. Um, it seems like, uh, it seems like I am in a lot of circles where abolition is, is frequently talked about, which is great. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, I just kinda, I didn't really, uh, know much about it probably until this past <laughs> really just few months. Yeah. Um, but we actually have a, a member at our church that's, um, that uh is considers himself an abolitionist awesome um he actually gifted me a copy of uh cr Cowley's book oh it's so um, good yeah uh, yeah doctrine of balaam um i read through that uh and kind of acquainted myself a bit more with uh kind of the some of the distinctions um between what's considered the abolitionist movement versus the pro-life movement mm-hmm. um i've just kind of been been learning probably more and more uh the past i want to say seven or eight months um, about some of those distinctions. Um, and then, uh, we met, um, well, I say met, but we encountered, um, Rachel, um, yes. um, through just our, yep. through, through our podcast stuff and our shirts that we were doing. Uh, we can talk more about that later, but yeah, she's like, Oh my gosh, you got to talk to, talk to Dusty Devers. And I'm like, I don't know who that is, but that guy's got a really cool name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, we we he, definitely like the name. <laughs> yeah. He should run for office. That's a winning name. It is a winning name. <laughs> Honestly, the name with the accent, with the with just just his persona, it was like I was not disappointed. No, <laughs> no, 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 no it was great. There's so we should he, he should be the gateway to abolition. We should send people to Dusty Devers. I, I, I'm just thinking he's he's a, no offense or he's a nice 
he's a, a good sell. I just feel like he, he's a, a palatable abolitionist. Yeah. So I think I, th- I think with a nice the right suit and tie, he's definitely he definitely could take office. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, I don't yeah. know what the problem is here. Let's get this done. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not. I came out in Oklahoma. I can't do anything. But you guys could do it. Yes. Yeah. We're gonna tag yeah. him in this video. Make sure he sees this and understands <laughs> that it would be sin if he didn't. It would be sin. <laughs> Consider it. <laughs> No, 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 no conscious hey, binding on the Liberator podcast. Hey, not here. I don't know. For the people who know the right thing to do and do not do it. <laughs> him, him, you know, <laughs> is, uh, yeah. the blanks. Yeah. <laughs> so so you, you said about seven, eight months ago. So that's around the time that the uh, the Southern Baptist Resolution on Abolishing Abortion w- was, was passed. Are you guys SBC at all or? No, we're not SBC. <laughs> not Should SBC. we tell them the name of the podcast we did after that one? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, what, what was the name? What was the name? I don't remember the name. It was uh, it was denomination or demonation. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. Doing a recap of the SBC. We weren't talking about the SBC inherently. We were talking Craziness. about in general what can happen inside of particular denominations. Right. Where the denomination becomes God, and we kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. broke it down along using some of the things. Sure, sure, sure. We're right. not denominational, but we do baptize believers, adult adult believers in full immersion. So I guess that does make us kind of Baptist. Yeah, kind of Baptist. Yeah. 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 Kind of Baptist. Not Anabaptist. No, kind of. Kind of Baptist. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> well, congratulations! You just started a denomination, <laughs> kind of, kind of or kind of a Baptist. demon nation. However, you want to. It's, it's a demon nation. <laughs> Welcome to our demon nation. Yeah, kind of I, I think yeah. a lot of us are kind of Baptist. I mean, kind some of, of us are kind of not Baptist. I guess we got some kind of not yeah. Baptist. Yeah, kind of not Baptist at your Baptist churches. That's well, no, confusing. I mean in the abolition movement, there's some. Oh, oh, oh! The, yes, okay. Some okay. baby baby dunkers. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, dunkers. Oh, no. Baby, Wait, dunk- no, baby, dunk- baby, baby sprinklers. Baby sprinklers. Yeah. Oh, whoa. <laughs> but actually, though, newborns, you can dunk them. Did they- they- you call the police? <laughs> <laughs> we got kind of Baptist, <laughs> Baptist, and criminals. <laughs> and we're all trying to establish justice for the preborn. Uh, abolish baby dunking, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, see, I don't even know the distinctions, but yeah. But anyway, so, yeah. You, guys, so you, guys, you guys are a uh, just a Bible-believing church that yes follows the lord jesus christ we are reformed uh yeah we're not part of any we're not we're, we're not part of any we like to keep we like to keep loose ties <laughs> yeah yeah because <laughs> so, stuff seems that, and and that's you know they're like you're non-committal and it's like well i mean i guess yeah, yeah. kind of but at the same time you know definitions seem to be changing so stinking quick yeah and we're our, our church is our church is very small and we we've got our we've got our heads to the our hands to the plow. We're just getting out there doing doing gospel work in our community. And that's, that's good. you know, kind of the, the main thing. Yeah. I mean, sure, we've probably got some distinctives and like it, like Justin said, we're probably more we're definitely more Baptist than we're more sixteen eighty nine than Westminster, that's for sure. But um, you know, it's uh yeah. I mean, back that's to good. your question though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I think there was definitely I'm there was definitely talk of it before that because the the member of our church has been i mean he's been pretty ardently abolitionist for for yeah. longer than that we've had many discussions who who is that I member feel it. his name is lou we'll, we'll, we'll throw lou out there lou solamedo he's a part of one of y'all's facebook groups lou solamedo apparently there's apparently there's, a apparently there's an group. abolitionist facebook group oh yeah yeah maybe, yeah, maybe there's a, a dusty's on so it's a yeah dusty, it's like a it's a it's secret on. group page that yeah. a lot a of people group. Know he about. said he yeah. said if for the right price <laughs> He said for the right price, and we might be able to get on it. He might know some people. He could grease some palms. Yeah. So the admins of that group anyway. are really slow at approving people. <laughs> it's we, like we have we all these questions was, about the gospel and stuff, and uh, admins. Oh, yeah, it's those. like people don't answer those questions. Like, I want to join your group, and I'm not going to answer your questions. You're like, well, you're going to sit there and <laughs> yes, wait yes, yes, for yes, like yes, yes, yes. years. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm sorry. Like ever. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, God. Yeah, you know, you you were talking about uh, Lou and talking to him on a number of occasions and all that. Before I interrupted? Yes. No, it's, it's, it's all good. <laughs> no, I didn't lose my train of thought. You can interrupt as many times as you okay. want. I'm like yeah. a golden retriever. It's all good. I can just like go. From <laughs> yeah. The trick is that he um, has no train. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Can't diagram this. Squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, anyway. yeah. so, so here's a question right. related to Lou. So whenever oh, okay. Lou, because so, so abolitionists generally tend, well, I think there's a lot of distinctions, but one of them that I think kind of annoys people um, is that abolitionists look at uh, the abortion holocaust as sort of like a love your neighbor issue 
and all Christians ought to be trying to love their neighbor and love God. And so there's there, once you kind of start looking at a, I'm fighting abortion in keeping the commandments to Christ and following Christ, the abolitionist starts looking at everybody else sometimes and kind of comes on a little strong, kind of like, why aren't we making this a huge deal? When the pro-life movement has set it up in such a way where it's like you make it a big deal like one day out of the year or when you vote, but you don't sort of like integrate fighting abortion into your day in, day out life. Uh, like your church is expected to be fighting abortion all the time. So I just remember back in the day, it was always people were like, you're obsessed. It's like, you want us to talk about abortion every day? What's wrong with you? And and so abolitionists were sort of, I don't know, uh, uh, agitators did feel, did to their feel, churches. Did you feel marginalized and, and did you feel victimized? Is that what it was? No, not at all. <laughs> we, can, we can talk about it. No, I just think, I just think safe Adam, space on the place. Liberator podcast. Yeah, this okay. is not a safe space, but we will edit. No, I'm just <laughs> I don't think... <clears throat> Was he so, a problem well, for you? Was he a gadfly? No, no. We have a new... Uh, that's not how... Mm-hmm. That is certainly not how... Uh, I don't think... Well, every church has problems. But we're, we're, we're much more fam- familial-based. We have a... You know, we, we, we view ourselves in a covenant family relationship. And mm. so there's a lot... There's plenty of open, very free discussions. Like, there's no hold, there's no holds barred. You know, there's, there's no, there's no right. halfway, half measures. Um, and so since that's all the conversations, there's really no... There was really no difference between any of the conversations we'd have about any given topic and, and between engaging over the ideas of abolitionism. Yeah. But, but I mean, no, because That's... I mean, like, I don't know how to, I don't want to say this the wrong way. Um, yes, what I said about right. there being no train. Yeah. No tra- <laughs> just you're right. Say it in a truthful way. If people think it's wrong, <laughs> eh, they can deal with I it. I just want to try to say it well. Yeah. You're definitely correct about, about how particularly the energized abolitionists can come across. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's an accurate portrayal um, because, but that was never what I got from Lou and, and certainly more so you more so see that in the different contexts online mm-hmm. and different forums or maybe in different interactions that someone may be, may be having, but, mm-hmm. but I don't think, I don't think that was ever actually an issue that came up with Lou and, and it wasn't. Yeah. I always, I kind of view it as if you're a biblical Christian who has, who has been anti-abortion your whole life, then the stances of the abolitionist movement are simply a natural, right. they're just a natural movement. They are, they're biblical. They're, they're well-reasoned. So I don't think it's, I don't think yeah. it's something where I think it's something that's just like, Oh no. Yes. This is, this is, this is putting more clear vocabulary uh, to, to exactly what I've always believed in, yeah. in the Bibles. This is, this is a, a natural progression yeah. and that's that pretty common sense. that's a common way that we hear it. like i would say like if the person really does believe in the authority of scripture if you properly expound the principles of abolition they're going to be like yeah that's it that's i'm it. i'm with you on that that's what i've always and then it's kind of like wait is that not what the pro-life movement and you're like no and then you you show and then they're like oh well goodness yeah i have no problem with this but in churches where maybe they don't have sort of like a berean culture of I'm just going to hear out whatever's being proposed and test it to see whether it's biblical or not. There was pushback, but it seems like you're the way that you say it is, is becoming more and more common. It's like, Oh yeah. Some yeah. abolitionist was in my church and, you know, gave me a pamphlet or put forward some ideas and they were biblical. So yeah, we're abolitionists and there wasn't much of a pushback. So I mean, yeah, it's it, really good. Usually with smaller churches, uh, that's often the case. Yeah. Yeah. It seems to be, I'm not trying to, Smaller reform type churches seem well, to be you know, so pretty biblically quick. minded churches. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> pretty, pretty quick. It makes it easy. It. it makes for a nice, a nice natural movement. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I agree with all that. I mean, there's there's a certain uh, there's a certain kind of like a depending on who you're interacting with, there is definitely this certain kind of cage stage kind of uh, yeah, almost <laughs> with, any, a, with anything <laughs> with yeah. anything really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. It, it's of, of course they're the, they're some of the loudest people too. Um, but you know, like, I, I think when, when Lou gave me uh CR Cowley's book and I started learning some of the distinctives, I'm like, what's re- like, you know, like our, our parents both volunteered for a, a crisis pregnancy center that does absolutely fantastic work. 
Uh, my mom did counseling there. My dad, our dad, our dad, and our mom. Do <laughs> um, <laughs> so you guys need to I'm take some kidding. time? <laughs> it's because you, you look that way. It's hard to remember. That you, <laughs> you know, and um, and he's like, you know, why don't why don't you come to the abortion mill with us? And I'm like, well, you know, we can all just kind of do our own thing, and you know, like you can go there, we can serve here, we can do this, like, you know, a multifaceted approach, which is, you know, perfectly fine. I, I think even when we were talking with Dusty, and I think uh, in Callie's book as well, um, I, I don't think anybody downplays a multifaceted approach um, or, yeah. or downplays a, it, any, anything more than, you know, a, anything else necessarily. No one would say, oh, counseling's wrong, you shouldn't do that. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think I think when he gave me Callie's book and I, and I started reading about about the the pro-life movement itself and about how ineffective its approach towards legislation and how ineffective uh incrementalism uh can be i think i i think i started to at least understand a lot more about the abolitionist perspective it's like oh yeah no i mean i guess i'm not going to defend a position that really just doesn't really get anything done <laughs> yeah um or or is or is almost counter counterproductive yeah, and doesn't uh, hold scripture as the final authority on the yeah. way that they that they take on yeah. abortion. It's like not only do they not get things done, like yeah. practically they you've got fifty years of evidence of not really, you know, doing anything to to really halt the Holocaust, but scripturally they're not obeying God. So there's sort of like a doing what God says is best. Being sort of worldly wise doesn't really pan out. Um, so, yeah. but yeah. some people get very persuaded by the the argument, the practical argument, like this, this doesn't work. Um, you know, and that's fine because I think what God says in his word does work. So if you can show them from scripture, that should be enough, but it does pan out as well. I've always said, even if what God says, what God's word says, uh, doesn't get us the results we're looking for. It doesn't matter. If God said it, that's what we do. So yep. <laughs> yeah. Of course, yeah. And sometimes you end up lot, being Jeremiah like that. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, exactly. Sometimes we will we'll throw on the sackcloth and, and sit in ashes and, and that's the way that's the way it's going to be. But we're going to follow what God says. God, yeah. God is what God has said is, yeah. is, is what he's sovereign over and we're going to move that way. And, and that's that's it. There's, there's yeah. kind of a kind of a faithfulness is the metric open and shut case. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I, I think in the same train. Um, <laughs> Look, he's trying to. Anytime he does Bring something, he sounds like I do is have this like, a train of thought. <laughs> is this like the Polar Express? Uh, <laughs> no, that movie is scary. That kind of real, real weird, train. No. Weird, weird. No, no. Um, we. I, I felt like I felt like really hearing the articulated arguments inside of the abolitionist movement were were definitely the same things that they were exactly what i've always thought the the way the scriptures especially and i think that it probably dovetails into some of the other things that we had, we had talked about engaging in on this this particular podcast mm -hmm. episode we we've seen this before it matches directly up with with the way oh, we've we've needed to see the sovereignty of christ and his word over the church yep. um the church service the church meeting um what it means to be a part of the ecclesia and and to take that sovereignty and and what the word says should be over all things. It's it, it's all Christ's. Yeah, he is sovereign over everything, and what his word says is true for everything. Where it speaks, it is law, and and that that particular aspect just makes sense when you're looking at the abolitionist movement. When you're speaking about the unborn, and what that what that life is, what God says is what stands. And yeah. how, and and the, the unequal weights and measures is clear. Mm -hmm. uh, practicing practicing biblical, biblical justice is clear. Yeah. All of these things uh, line up. Yeah. So I, so it's it's just a natural. Yeah, and I think it's and it and it's good that we talk about this all the time because I think a lot of folks assume, you know, incorrectly, but I think it's coming from a good place. But they I think they assume that the pro life movement, you, you know, must be biblical. The pro life movement you know, I was raised this way. I held signs, you know, life signs or whatever. I, I gave to this crisis pregnancy center. My pastor preached pro-life stuff and they just kind of assumed that all that pro-life stuff hated unequal weights and measures and wouldn't show partiality. And somehow they just never looked at what they were supporting, particularly when it comes to legislation. And so I think when the abolitionists come along and say, Hey, okay, let's hold up this bill that you the pastor just told all the people to support. 
let's hold it up to scripture. And all of a sudden, that's where you're like, whoa, they're not treating abortion as murder. They're not calling for justice. This bill actually says that, you know, mothers who murder their children should be um, immune from prosecution. That seems different, you know. And so I think that, you know, not to go off on too much of this, but I think that once a pastor or someone who's biblically literate looks not just at the abolitionist movement, but actually looks at the pro-life movement, that's where all of a sudden, whoa, what have I been supporting? And then you look at, and of course, it's connected to Rome and it's connected to pragmatism. And then you dig a little deep and they're like explicitly not Christian. It's like, wow, this is crazy. How did this happen? How did all these churches get here? So that's why abolitionists, I think, are, you call it cage stage, but I think, I think sometimes it's like the abolitionist, the paradigm shift is so strange. They're like, oh my gosh, the people of God in the United States of America have been following Rome in not obeying the gospel when it comes to the abortion Holocaust. And there's been 65 million children killed as a result of it. So it kind of sets us on edge. Well, you know, <laughs> that and all the coffee, you guys have it. There is a, yeah, the coffee just <laughs> makes you tweak a little bit when you're on edge. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's not really surprising. The church has been, has been that way for, for the, geez, generations. Honestly, it's, it's the same, the same ap- apathy has crept in. I mean, perhaps a little before, but in regards to the family, in regards to the meeting, in regards right. to yeah. um, b- biblical literacy, I mean, it's, education, it's been just about the education. Yeah. Yeah. It's been about the same, the same time, time frame really elapsed all these things. Yeah. Um, because what we had created was a public, not that uh, a Christian, uh, a Christian um, church base that not that knew the word, not that was engaged with, um, with gospel literacy or biblical literacy, but was rather engaged um, with the country club that they went to every Sunday, yeah. you know, so that they could say, yep, nope, I'm, I'm part of that church. Right. And, yeah. uh, and, and that's, that's led us to this massive yeah. amount of people identifying as what, what, uh, religious nuns, the, the nuns, they're not, yeah. they're non, they're not associated with anything religiously. They're non-spiritual. And, and it's, it's, it just was the apathy of, of generational leadership, yeah. father to son to daughter. It's yeah. just, it, it was all about the same. It, it, it's yeah. not just the abortion. Yeah, abortion is probably abortion. where you... everything. <laughs> yeah, abortion is where you kind of can see... You're like, how a culture that murders its children in the womb, like, every minute of every day. Like, how did we get here when there's 100 million professing Christians and hundreds of thousands of churches? Well, it's, it's, not, it's not just abortion. It's everything. And all that other idolatry and biblical, just not submitting to the Word of God leads to things like abortion and abortion is so clear like child sacrifice that's the sort of thing that didn't even enter god's mind right uh, you know as he says and and along those lines i think i want the everyone listening and watching this to be just encouraged by and encouraged to go take action maybe is the fact that there's a there's there's a there's a man in in these guys church who came to them and said hey what do you guys think of this and there's there's a guy in dusty devers church named josh wall who came to dusty and said hey what do you, you know, this is abolitionist movement. Can we, can we get involved in this? And so I think pastors who care about the word of God, when people in their church come to them and they say, Hey, yeah, let's, let's, let's line this up against scripture. Let's line what the pro-life movement's doing up against scripture. And let's, let's see, let's see which one holds. Um, pastors are coming along. So I just want everyone watching to be just yeah. encouraged uh, by, by Lou and, and by, and by these guys at Carpe, Carpe Fide and Dusty and all these guys who are coming along. And the church situation is, is changing, you know, it's yeah, not it's where it needs better. to be, but it is, it, it things are, it does seem things are moving, especially here in Oklahoma. I don't know how much of that comes through in New Jersey. I don't know what the situation is over there, but here in Oklahoma, not much of Oklahoma comes through New Jersey. No. <laughs> no. We we try to avoid yeah. New Jersey, yeah. like the rest of the country. You, you should. There's really no reason to come here. Uh, <laughs> I've seen New way. Jersey. I've Maybe seen New stones. Jersey across bodies of water before. Yes, it looks yes, like a nice yeah. place. It's not bad from a distance, actually. It's quite nice, actually. Yeah. I found that from a distance, it looks quite nice. From yeah. a distance, I think our, yeah. I think our governor just signed a, a reproductive act that basically yes, yes, allows any abortion in any trimester for any reason, just, you know, yeah. get her done. The, actually, the fact that it took him this long to get it signed probably was, was what's really so surprising because yeah. you know, the fact that New York beat us to it was, is surprising given our, our governance. But um, yeah. Yeah. We're, well, I, I, I tend to say is horrible <laughs> as someone who's like read enough history and seen enough providential stuff happen. I don't think it's, it seems like Oklahoma, it's more likely to abolish abortion than New Jersey or New York. Yes. But, 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 I, but when I look like, you know, I look at it and I always say that there's two kinds of States where abolition is really hard. 
like where it's going to be hard to abolish abortion, the state where pro-choicers dominate the government and states like ours where pro-lifers dominate the government. <laughs> it's like you, you, we, can't pa- we can't pass an abolition bill in Oklahoma because the pro-lifers kill them. You guys mm. can't even get one filed. But I, <laughs> no. <laughs> so, 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 we, so we're both in you know, dire straits when it comes to this issue, but because we believe in the gospel, because we've seen people historically – like a Wilberforce, he was kind of a playboy, do nothing, just rich kid out having fun and being a member of parliament. Well, God got a hold of him, converted him, and he started wanting to live for God and for his neighbors. And so you can get abolition from, I mean, maybe not New Jersey, but you could get it pretty much everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. God you can, can get water it. from a rock. He can almost <laughs> get abolition from yeah. New Jersey. <laughs> yeah. We have- he can make a donkey talk. He can make New Jersey abolish abortion. <laughs> yes. Eventually. This, this is true. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it's funny to laugh at, but you can have revival. I mean, Nineveh yeah. may be slightly worse than New Jersey. And they, Maybe. And they repented for a season. So They did. Yeah. So. yeah. Then ultimately, well, you know, well, yeah. we know what we know what biblical history They went back into so their journey. Nobody reads those chapters of the Bible anyway, so no. nobody knows. <laughs> Yeah. None of it didn't make it. So yeah, yeah. anyway, that's neither here nor there. They're yeah. good for a while there, I think. Yeah. I think there's six, yeah, absolutely years or there's 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 always hope. There's in 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 the, in the economy of God. There's always hope. That's yeah. that's yeah. the amazing thing. Yeah. Uh, and, and until until the actualization of of Christ of Christ's uh, redemptive work being fulfilled, there there is always hope. And then after yeah. it's been after the the fullness of time has come, there's no need for hope anymore because we're in the presence of God forever. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, um, and I and I believe all day, the governments will rest hope. on their shoulders. So. Yeah. 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 Even new, even the government of New Jersey will someday rest mm. on his. Well, look, one person at, or one or person. not be there. <laughs> like Nineveh. <laughs> Man, we just we just figured it out. <laughs> I just always say we could just need to go one person at a time and one person at a time slowly but surely we'll get there. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. take us a while because there's a lot of people crammed into a very small spot yeah. in New Jersey. Yeah. Yep. We don't have many things but we do have the most per- people per square mile. Yes. Oh, yes, really? We yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. We are very dense. Yeah. <laughs> that's why we have a lot. That's why, yeah. though we're like one of the tiniest states, we have a good number of representatives in the House because we have a lot of population. Mm. Yeah, ah, interesting. Ah, that's why you do that. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so uh, so like spread out, you guys. Uh, Seriously, the- you can take half of them out in Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could put New Jersey in Oklahoma and. Oh, easy. One hundred percent. I guess we would notice in, in, inside of Norman. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got space out there, do you? Oh, we got, yes. Yeah, anyone oh, who says, like, we're going to run out of uh, space has never driven from, like, Tulsa to, to Wichita. <laughs> it's just all space. Yeah. Isn't it, isn't it kind of dusty out there, though? Isn't no, it kinda... everything grows and everything's good. There's cows everywhere. It's, okay. We all don't right. have a problem, man. All right. I, I'll, I'll, I'll buy it. Uh, in fact, if you want to get me a number, somebody's looking to get some, rid of some land, just let me know. Yeah. Well, there's um, there, yeah, you guys should <laughs> keep on doing the work in New Jersey. Okay. <laughs> okay. <All right. laughs> All right, we, we're getting overrun with like Californians and stuff. So, uh, bummer. Oh, we we balance out their votes. I don't know what the problem is. He's not he's not he's not letting us come to Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah. you've got three kids. I've got five kids. I mean, Scratch Oklahoma off the list. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the. It's not the I'm just saying anymore. it's not the promised land. We got our issues as well. No, so. look, there's no it, there's issues everywhere. So. Anyway, this is either here anyway, or there. So, yeah. So, uh, back so to the podcast. Yeah, back to this podcast. <laughs> um, and 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 our little notes here. <laughs> One of the big things Carpe Fide has been sort of trumpeting and talking about a lot is the defying tyrants um, sort of theme out there, standing up against sort of government governmental authorities who have overstepped their bounds and stuff. And and I am told that that's a bit of what led to the birth of your podcast. That's definitely what led to a growth. Okay, the growth led to the birth of you ever knowing about it. (laughs) I I know about this because you guys defy tyrants. (laughs) There's worse things to be known for, I guess. Yeah, 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 Yeah. that's for sure. Well, that's before I knew anything about y'all. That's I. That's that's one thing that connected. Oh, those guys support you know a biblical view of you know lower magistrates. How we treat an unrighteous ruler. I can tell you how I can tell you how I treat an unrighteous ruler. 
Yeah. <laughs> and give him the right hand of fellowship. That's what you do. <laughs> we uh, Baptist joke. I mean, so many of our. <laughs> I was going to say more like Ehud's left le- left hand with the dagger, but whatever. <laughs> yes, and the da- and it did sink into into Eglon's. Yes, Eglon's. What, what was ex- the- oh, it was, it just, anyway, anyway, <laughs> uh, Eglon was fat. The sword got stuck. What are you going to do? Yeah, <laughs> many many rolls. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, my kids, my kids. Uh, in their Bible, their morning Bible study and going through like tent staking, you know, like, like women, put, like yeah. women put tent stakes through people's right, heads right. in the right. Bible. And it's my, my kids are very aware of that. And so it's kind of like a, that's great. But maybe, you know, like Joe Biden's bad tent stake. <laughs> No, like, ten sick. This Whoa. is legit. Whoa. Whoa. It's like, well, I, don't, I guess if, if you ever find Joe Biden sleeping in your room, Go and the Lord it. tells you to do, don't disobey God. That's all I'm saying. We, had, we, had, we don't have to edit that out, but you know what I'm saying. I'm not saying. <laughs> yeah, we got it. We got it. Um, anyway, so back to defying tyrants and you guys. No, Nancy Pelosi's eyebrows make kind of like a target. <laughs> Nancy Pelosi's eyebrows are in her hairline. I don't know what's <laughs> happening. <laughs> Nancy Pelosi's eyebrows. I'm sorry. No, this is they went hair. there. Not, I, I was allowed to do that. This is not yeah. okay. All right. Yeah. We're really missing. You just yeah. made a um, meme. So we actually, we actually did a lot of... Uh, We've done a lot of different topics on our podcast, mm-hmm. um, but we've we've always stuck uh, very. We want to be very re- relevant with God's word. God's word. God's word is relevant because what what is necessary is truth. We need yep. truth. There's yeah. no there's nothing without truth. There's no love. You cannot be loving without truth, right? Um, and you certainly cannot be righteous without God's truth. And so we've had we've had so much so many discussions on education. Um, we have talked about abortion. Why is it that? Satanists always want to like defend abortion. Shouldn't people start to like wonder that? Anyway, that's, yeah. what, that's one yeah. of the things that we touched on when we talked about abortion. Um, but but we always, we enjoy history a lot. History is is absolutely awesome. And and looking at history, you can see uh, just the hand of sovereignty so often. So right. I mean, we've done a lot of different content. Um, and and basically, we didn't when we started doing a podcast, we were just thinking it might be supplementally helpful for our church body and our friends and, and to help our community grow just some, an extra resource for them mm-hmm. uh, to engage with. And, and it, it kind of, it just, you know, consistency and it just kept growing and that was uh, all God's providence. And, um, and we got to the point where um, we were really engaging with the, with the lockdowns, uh, you know, 15 years to slow the spread or whatever it was. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. um, we, we, were, we were just engaging with, what was coming from our government, um, which was so stark in contrast to what uh, our founders uh, and certainly what a righteous ruler would do mm-hmm. uh, from God's word. And, and we kept a- addressing these, these seemingly these, these same topics. And then what, things started to really go sideways in Canada. Um, and it was, it was probably, it was last, it was this last February. So we're coming up on a year. Um, we had, a, we had a shirt design and we wanted to make the shirt. And so for my birthday, I was like, I was like, honey, I'm taking some money and printing a T-shirt. <laughs> so, and uh, she said, I've had that same conversation you know, with my wife. Yeah, have you? <laughs> she said, "Well, I think you're crazy, but that's what you want to do." People who think there's money in T-shirts are crazy. There is not. They also are t-shirts. crazy. <laughs> no, what we're finding is what, what there is though is a ministry in T-shirts, and that's been yeah. really awesome. Yeah. Um. And and so yeah, we we printed off some T-shirts and we had them ready, and then then James Coates went to jail for an extended period of time. We're like, look, this is, we're going to use this. We're going to use this for, for, for God's glory to minister to them. And that's when stuff really started to, to pick up pace pretty quickly. Um, yeah. And so we, we, we thought, look, we're not going to do, we're not going to, we're not trying to build a business here, but, but if these shirts can raise some funds, let's do it. So we started sending the shirts out to just different, different people we respected inside of um, um, biblical reformed, True, truly Christian men and, and women that were standing and, and some of them wore it and some of them promoted it. And then people started buying it and we were tr- rapidly trying to figure out how to <laughs> how meet uh, the need. keep our, keep a good quality of t-shirt and, and kind of move forward with that. And we were trying to engage uh, as many Canadians as we could who were on the front lines where they were at the moment to bring that down into here and get some, get some good exposure for them in, in the States from our little perspective. And, and I think the Lord, the Lord really moved in that in ways that obviously two you know, schmucks in a basement in New Jersey have no idea what's going on. Uh, and God used it for his glory nonetheless. So, yeah. um, that's kind of, that's kind of where we, 
where we went with that. I and mean, we, we only defy tyrants when they're unrighteous and when they're tyrannical. We we don't yeah. we don't waste time when they're not. We have enough we have enough kingdom work to do. But um, yeah. I think that's because we're biblical. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> when yeah, they need to be defied, we must defy them. <laughs> yeah, if you're doing a podcast that's going to be relevant today, you're you're going unless you're shying away from talking about things that are relevant, you're going to be talking about defying tyrants when tyrants are tyrants. So it's, yeah. it's kind of like, it's not your hobby horse. It's just, it's what Christians need to be talking about right now yeah, because there's a lot. It. Yeah. We forgot it. We've had a lot of fat shepherds and fat sheep and, and the wolves are coming and the wolves are eating the fat ones first. So it's time to, <laughs> it's, it's time to get lean and mean and start moving from yeah. this, moving from pasture to pasture, stay ahead of the wolves. It's time to, you know, it's time to, you know, push back in culture here and push back in culture there. And oh, well, yeah. that's a, that's a, that's a t-shirt design. Carpe Fide Fitness. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, anyway, no, it's when you get into the t-shirt mode, like you, anytime Everything someone says something kind of clever, you're like, Ooh, that's a t-shirt. You know, <laughs> yeah, I got all like, these t-shirt designs that we never, print. Dustin does that. And I'm like, can't we try it on a sticker first? Then like, <laughs> <laughs> Invest in a sticker. But yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, what did I tell you? We, oh, that's right. Tell we me t-shirt. Lying. Good. <laughs> We were in line in Disney and <laughs> just thought of it. We were in, we were in Star Wars, waiting for one of the Star Wars rides in Disney World. And I was like, Jesse, we should do a T-shirt. That's Darth Vader, and it says, <clears throat> "I find your lack of children disturbing." <laughs> <laughs> and Jesse's like, well, "What about the people that just you know made in America and they can't have children?" I'm like, "Yeah, I guess we probably should." Take them through. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be offensive <laughs> to some people. Them. But they'll understand. Yeah, like, really, like if you find some some other sucker to design that, feel free. But no way. <laughs> I just ain't touching that. I'm just the idea guy. I throw a lot of ideas at the wall and we see what's just keep throwing them. There's yeah. like there's just multiple layers to that because then Luke, he killed the younglings and there's just. <laughs> yeah, it gets. Messy, Star Wars yeah. gets really dark. If you, really like, you think about it, like how did they keep this PG or PG? Yeah. I guess I don't know what the original ones are. Yeah, there's this whole dark side to the whole movie, and it's just <laughs> it, there <laughs> is. Yeah, come on, James, laugh at that. I know you wanted to. Just let it out. <laughs> James, he does. He's never seen Star Wars. He doesn't know what we're talking about. Oh, uh, that's why. Okay. It's like yeah. No, uh, I remember when you, I, whenever I saw that, you? and it killed their children, and I was just like watching that. I, I was older when the new ones came out, and he's like telling Padme and I killed their women and their children. And I was like, the sand, the sand people. What's the big deal? <laughs> Weird <laughs> flex, but okay. Like, <laughs> I, was, I was like, I was like, I don't know. They're kind of like Philistines, right? <laughs> but I guess go to the dark side. But he didn't have, he had the Metachlorians telling him to do it. He didn't have the God's, God's oh, permission. The dark side. It, j- it just, clicked. Side. it just, <laughs> clicked. <laughs> now I got it. <laughs> Oh my! I wasn't God, homeschooled. Man, okay. I can't. Rachel actually was homeschooled, and she doesn't know a single movie that has ever been made, so she wouldn't know Star. She wouldn't yeah. know Star Wars, but I do know Star Wars. Yeah, it just, it, it just, it just, it so just it, took a moment. Isn't Sam like a big Star Wars guy? <laughs> Sam's just big all movies. He knows isn't everything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Rachel, she hasn't even seen Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Nothing. What? Wrong. Yeah, I They're fired. Christian I movies. fired her when I saw that. And she, <laughs> she's, I, clearly, she's clearly not reformed. So yeah. that's, that's. I rehired her very quickly and said we had to. Go, <laughs> that was a smart, move. Smart, <laughs> smart, what like, smart move. We're gonna have to have like a extended. You know, they're all four hours long. We'll do them all in one yes. day. Yes. Not the Hobbit more, though. We won't. It's a uh, it's a work meeting. Yeah, a <laughs> yeah. work meeting. Yeah. It, it'll be expiring. <laughs> so anyway, how many T-shirts have you guys printed? So that. That was the oh first gosh. one, a shirt to raise money for. Yeah, that was our, our come and take it with the pulpit. So that was the come and take it flag, yeah. uh, the Gonzalez flag. For well, we'll have S- 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 Sam drop that one right yeah, here. That image we'll, yeah. we'll put up for people to see. The come oh, and take it cool. with the pulpit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which yes. is also on your bookmark. And I have, I, I oh, was it is, using, it is on our bookmark. I was using your bookmark oh. the other day. It's oh, a good bookmark. It's, it's good. It's hard hitting, truth telling, fun loving. I was just reading the back of the bookmark. <laughs> no, you did a great job. Yeah. But it says support yeah. bold Christian messages through bold Christian apparel at carpefide.com slash shop. So how many t-shirts are there on your oh, shop? Oh, there's um, a gaggle. <laughs> that's not a, is that a that's technical? Not helpful. A, there's a gathering Sorry, of turkeys? No. So, is that what you're saying? So the, 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 the original, the OG is the come take it pulpit. And that, yeah. that's when, uh, that's when we, we launched that when uh, Pastor Coates was in jail. Uh, for literally gathering so yeah yeah, defying tyrants is kind of kind of there from from the beginning um we've sold literally hundreds of those 
from mm-hmm. Maine to Hawaii. Yeah, several, several, um, several hundreds of <laughs> so many labels. It's so many labels, <laughs> and it's and people it's, buy it's those really in Hawaii. Hard. Good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I didn't even know there were Christians in Hawaii. Yeah, but yeah, we sent one there. Yes, there are, and they did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, they did. Um, but but yeah, I mean, and that's 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 the whole ministry aspect is like you know just talking with with Pastor James and and his wife Erin. Like it, it really does. Like when people tag them in in the pictures with those shirts, and they know that they're supported, and that mm-hmm. people are praying for them, and whole churches are pray- taking their pictures out out front of their church with these shirts on, and um, you know, it's it's just been it's really been a, a huge blessing, not only to them but also to the to the other churches that have that have taken stands yeah. um, to yeah. see that support. Um, yeah. So we did yeah. that um, a couple months after. Um, James was put in jail. Um, there was some, there, were, there was some Canadian chatter. Um, they told us about a man named Tim Stevens. They're like, yeah, I think Tim Stevens is going to be thrown in jail soon. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know who that is. And um, <laughs> he's, he's uh, yeah. another pastor um, out in Alberta. And uh, lo and behold, uh, the next day uh, they came and arrested him uh, in front of his wife and children. He was in jail um, for, I think it was, I think it was almost a month as well. Um, yeah, it was, a, cause it was a little less. So it was like, it was almost 60 days for, no, it was 64. No, it, was, it was 35 for Pastor Coates. Was it 35? It was. And it was 35. just for having a, a meet, a religious service, a meeting. Yes. Correct. And, 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 and that was just yeah. against, but I always thought surely lots of churches are doing that. They're just like picking one person to. Turns out no. To, but no. lots of churches weren't. Yeah, not, not Correct. Right. in Canada. Yeah. In, in in Canada, we 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 spoke with um, Pastor Aaron Rock. He was one of the first Canadians that we interviewed. He's uh, right across, right across um, from Detroit in Windsor, Ontario. Um, he estimated um, that probably one tenth of one percent of churches were yeah. open and gathering during the lockdown. One tenth so. of one percent. Yeah, and so yeah. you look at Canada and how secular minded they've become. You're like, well, it's because the salt and the light there is not very bright or salty. And you, and yeah. then whenever well, it comes to good. this, you know, you only have like one or two <laughs> pastors willing to still teach and shepherd their right. flocks in the midst of a pandemic. They've become secular because the, the culture has become secular because their church is secular. The, yeah. the churches yeah. are secular. They're not, they're not um, based on the sovereignty of God's word based on the supremacy of Christ. They're based on, on the secular worldview. That's, yeah. that's where they live. That's where they do their doctrines. Um, that's, that was one of the things that we were, we kept, we kept interacting with. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the next shirt naturally came out of that. I mean, we had a bunch of ladies like, Oh, well, I'm not a pastor and I want to come and take a shirt. So we put a, we, we used to, we redesigned that with the Bible in the middle. <laughs> um, and that was our second shirt. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but, the but, Tim Stevens shirt. Yeah. The Tim, the, the week before he got um, arrested, um, he gave a, a homily before his sermon, and uh, one of the one of the lines from that um, was he, he was like, "Christ body, Christ choice, right? Like this, the people, and we do what he says, uh, not not what our government says if it's in contradiction with what he says." So mm-hmm. um, that was that was another uh, the the next shirt that we did for um, one of the Canadian pastors. Um, that's got a, that's got a pulpit in the middle with, uh, with pews and doors open that just says Christ body, Christ choice. Um, just really just, again, it's, it's all the same theme, right? It's, yeah. Yeah. it's all, um, it, follow God. Um, don't obey, don't obey bad, bad rulers when they're not actually doing what God has called them to do. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's classic Daniel. It's classic yep. name your apostle. Um, it's, yeah. it's, it's, you know, it's classic John the John yeah. the John the Dunker, <laughs> um, you know it's 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 the same thing. But mm-hmm. but yeah, I mean, it, when when we talk to them, um, it, there there is no broader evangelical push up there. Um, like we've gotten into trouble. We've actually we actually had our account blocked by the Gospel Coalition Canada um, yeah. for commenting on one yeah. of their posts. Yeah, but was- they are. Not at all surprising. Yeah, but. I was about to say, wasn't there an article from them? And I'll I, maybe we'll just take this out so I don't slander if, if I'm wrong. But I thought I think I remember they put an article I think criticizing James Coates or criticizing one of the other pastors who was keeping his church open or, or something along those lines. Yeah, yeah, they've, they've right, criticized almost every pastor that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. there's one 
criticizing Aaron Rock and Jacob mm-hmm. Rayom. He's at yeah. Trinity Bible Chapel. There was one against against James, and we we did a wow. whole podcast episode recounting all the, the Canadians. They sent us a bunch of articles where they just went through and blasted these these faithful, righteous, godly men for doing faithful, righteous, godly things. Yeah. And you know, and then here's this place that has the name the Gospel Coalition. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, like, no, it's bad. Yeah. It's, it's like, like, is this the Babylon Bee? Is this satire? <laughs> no, they're changing yeah, yeah. Change yeah. conduct to change your name. Like something's yeah. wrong here. Yeah, it's it's getting. I mean, it's not just Canada. I mean, the Gospel Coalition in general is pretty bad. I mean, they're they're anti-abolitionist, which all our viewers are gonna know that. But yeah. on some of these issues, it wasn't the Gospel Coalition, but very similar. But the ERLC just pu- published a thing against uh, Jonathan John MacArthur's church. And like basically saying, no, 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 you're being bad. You're being sinful for like standing up on these things. And you're just like, yeah. this is coming from like the, whenever I was first Christian, you know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Al Mohler, Russell Moore and all these guys, like I was reading their books thinking these were like heroes, you know, and now, yeah. you know, coming from organizations like, wait, is John Piper affiliated with that organization? That's telling me to get woke. Like, I don't, what's yeah. going on? So yeah, it's, it's, it's not just the secular, uh, you know, worldly churches. It's we're getting it from, you know, people who proclaim to believe the gospel on yeah, the defying tyrants we're... issue. Oh, yeah, yeah. no, absolutely. Um, I think I think what you're seeing is that uh, it's not just that the gospel coalition is not not abolitionist. It's that many times they have issues with what the Bible says. <laughs> that seems to be the <laughs> yeah, problem, which is why they're. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 It's it's part there of you it. go. So now you. You're connecting all the dots now. Uh, that's yeah. the problem. I mean, the, the deeper you get into it, you're you're that you're the the Charlie meme from uh, from It's Always Sunny, where he's he's got his hand up here, and there's all the connected lines, stuff like that. You're like, oh, John Piper and the Yeah, yeah. You know, but where it's like this should not be surprising at this point. But yeah. yeah, at the end of the day, I don't care how many letters are past your name when you when you say the kind of crazy things these people are saying. I I don't I don't have time for you. You're you're an absolute yes. you're absolutely foolish. And All garbage I, goes to the same place. I will spit you from my mouth. I I, I have no time for your lukewarm insanity. I'm good. <laughs> We're all good over here. Yeah. <laughs> There's a shirt. I have no time for your lukewarm insanity. There you go. I don't know what the picture <laughs> is. <laughs> Put Jesse, that on a shirt. Didn't pick a pen. <laughs> Jesse, get on that. Okay, I'm on it. All right, thank you. Yeah. I don't know what Tony, lukewarm insanity. It's like uh, <laughs> vomit. Do you just put vomit on it or something? Like a dog eating its vomit? Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> we're just, that, that's the reference. All right, good. We're done. Best seller. Yeah, Sorry. Done. Don't make that. One of, one make of the it. other early shirts that, that people liked was uh, if, if you can, it just simply says, if you can go to blank, you can go to church. Because everything was open. Mm. You could go to Walmart. Yeah, yeah. You could go to Target. You could get your car washed. You could do all that, but churches needed to be. Yeah. Now, I remember Severely. when Fauci was saying that having sex with prostitutes is is, is okay, but don't go to church. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember that, but that's great. He didn't was say it that talking? way, but it was like, it was, it was, it was oh, definitely, he definitely about like. about sexual guidelines. Yes, he definitely He, he said something like, yeah, yes, you can have, like, I was just like, it, just sex, but you wear a mask or what yeah. is the deal here? It's like the if football like players running into each other. And I'm not taking the bait on this one. I'm not taking the bait. <laughs> if you wear a mask, yeah. a two, a three masks, everything will be fine. It's <laughs> yeah. okay. Yeah. And don't. That was pretty good. People, that was actually pretty good. Don't go Googling what I just said to see if what Please I said don't. was true. <laughs> don't do that. Just don't type in yes. But yeah, there was a whole lot of stuff that was essential. Uh, and meeting with the saints wasn't on, on that, the list. Yeah, that sure that sure did well. Um it also it also attacks our culture of being far too busy to go with to, to join with God's people. Yeah. Uh you know with soccer practices and well football games or whatever else people may be doing on Sundays and not actually being a me- active yeah. member of, of the body of Christ. Yeah. Uh, so it does two things. We we, we like that shirt. That's yeah. a good shirt. <laughs> when we were when we were down in G three this this uh this pair of gals came, comes up to us they're like we gotta tell you this story and uh they were they were transition they they were still live streaming some of their services and uh, but still meeting in person and uh, they said they said yeah our whole worship team got that shirt and wore it on the live stream <laughs> <laughs> she's like you you basically split our church over the that I'm like you know what you didn't need those people anyway <laughs> no, we yeah not, we did not divide your church we simply separated the wheat from the chaff yeah so, there's always no. a biblical way of dividing that's correct church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's correct. Yeah, I like I to think, but it's I, I unity. Think don't forget unity. No, the, the church has been ref- definitely been refined through this time. I, I'm 100 percent, 100 percent positive. We yeah. the, seeing seeing these national polls where the numbers of of 
you know, faithful church attendees is going down is not something that scares me because I, I, I'd rather follow the, the 12 guys yeah. that were behind Jesus, you know, to right to the gates of hell than, than sit with a bunch of fat sheep waiting, just waiting to be eaten in line with the yeah. wolves. I just, I think it's just, yeah, anyway, I, that's think, how I, feel I think it, I think it exposed the reality of what's going on. Absolutely. Uh, you know, in particular with, with pastors who like shut down and, and we're very okay with that. And you're just kind of like, what? What's going on? That's, you know? Yes. The pastors yeah. that seemed to tell her their, their standards of wh- how you could attend and how you could worship God around what their local magistrates were saying was appropriate. Those pastors need to realize that they're going to have to answer for that, those choices yeah. uh, before, before the sovereign of the universe. Um, yeah. And, and that just not a conversation that I would want to have. Nope. Yeah. Nope generally and a lot of them are saying stuff like well it's such an easy thing look we we've got technology we can live stream this is such an easy thing and i'm like well yeah but see you're 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 balking on this easy thing like you're missing the boat like it's gonna get worse. like what if the government's just checking with you like can we get christians not to meet on easter sunday yes we can yeah that's that's, yeah, what, that's what the governing authorities know we can get christians not to meet on easter sunday yeah, the, the first couple rounds of lockdowns in Canada, the, the first one that restricted churches was right literally the weekend before Christmas. Um, and I think the second one was literally the weekend before Easter. Easter, yes. And they're like, look, if, if y'all can't see if y'all can't see the spiritual implications of what our government's trying to do here, like you're you're completely yeah. missing the point. Yep. And and the, the wickedness is rampant. I mean, they, they tell us stories like even in provinces where vaccine passports aren't mandated, churches were still lining up to set up systems in place for things like vaccine passports for entry into worship. And you're like, I'm sorry, there's there's literally there's a whole category of sin called partiality that that falls under. And it's like you, you, you literally cannot do that. It's like you just it's just gone. And it's yeah. it's it's great because the faithful churches are growing. I mean, they're doubling and yeah. tripling in size, yeah. well, oh, mainly yeah. because there's just no one else. There's no one else. <laughs> there's no churches there's no to be at. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. I yeah. have a brother who was going, I'm not going to say too much here, but who was, who was going to a church that I thought he shouldn't be going to because of other things, teaching and practice and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, when they started putting up signs, like you have to wear a mask and all this kind of stuff, that was an issue that he being where he was just through stuff on the internet and everything, he was going to stand up to that. And he stopped going to that church because they did that. And I'm like, well, I think it's, I think that's appropriate. So I think that right. it's, it's had its good effect on moving right. people from like churches. They probably shouldn't be in to other churches. And so yeah. I mean, it looks bad, but it's good. You know? Yeah. We're, we're, I mean, we're not really terribly worried about that movement. No, no. Yeah. Not so much. Didn't we have a hunter that just recently left our church when we started putting those signs up? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we, have a sign, we have a sign on our door at the Free the States office that says, no masks, please. <laughs> because That's if excellent. you walk in with a, with a mask, we don't know who you are, and, you know, if you're yeah, here to yeah, kill it, us or something. So it, you it's know. so true. It's, that seems it's like odd, a legitimate it? thing. It really is odd. But I'm no one told us to take it down. I'm in line at the airport. <laughs> And it's all I can do to realize that I'm going to have to go up to a security guard who is going to suddenly expect me in this moment to pull my mask down so that they can tell I am, I am who I say I am. <laughs> yeah. But all the other times I need to have my mask on. <laughs> what, what are we doing here? Yeah, I know. It, it, the whole thing is just, I know we dwell on it too long, but outside of the whole like governmental overreach and all that kind of stuff, uh, it showed how stupid and insane our culture really is and how much they want a virtue signal. Like when you see a guy out in the, out on the sandbar at the ocean, wearing a mask, yeah. you're like, our, our, our culture's doomed. Like what the heck, yeah. you know, like, well, we, it's weird. We were just at Disney world. They, they did a, they did a kite show, which was super cool on, uh, on jet skis in this area. And <laughs> it was like a lagoon and then they're pulling these big giant, balloon the, things the, the jet ski great. riders were wearing masks yeah, in the water like, i'm like oh, that's, that's dangerous like going 30 miles an hour or something <laughs> yeah, in the water recipe for passing out at the wheel yeah, <laughs> yeah. like how many jet ski drivers have you lost <laughs> yeah no i mean backup waiting in the wings i watch i watch a lot of football when these guys are like running around smashing into each other on the field like yeah. bleeding all over each other and then they go on the sidelines they put their masks on yeah, yeah it's yeah. like you this is really just, stupid 
you just bled and spit in that guy's eye, and now you're wearing a mask? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are we doing here? <laughs> yeah, or the coach oh, puts on the mask for, like, the, the post-game thing, but the whole time he was coaching, he had right, to pull right. it off yeah, yeah, so yeah. his players could actually hear him. It's just it's just insane. Yeah. Everyone knows yeah. it. Well, talk about insane. I'm a healthcare worker in New Jersey. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, yeah. They're going to have you sew the mask to your beard. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Well, it was, it was funny. My, my boss, actually, they – so, like – in, in, they wanted us to they wanted to fit test everybody for the n95 masks right the, the nice ones mm. and um my boss told me and i'm like well I'm, I'm not shaving my beard and she's like well i guess you could apply for a religious exemption <laughs> so i wrote a two-page paper <laughs> like a I, I wrote a two-page paper about how beards are connected with honor <laughs> all, all, of, all of this other thing about how it's a disgrace to shave the beard and don't you know this boy didn't have to shave his beard. <laughs> yeah. You could have got rid of someone really religious and they're like, well, in Ezekiel chapter four, uh, God asked oh, yeah. Ezekiel to shave his beard for religion. Uh, no, no. That they, they did. They couldn't go there. They weren't prepared. They, they just didn't. They just did. They just couldn't do it. Yeah. They break out. They break out in hives when they go near the word of God. Most of them. So yeah. yeah. They can't That's even insane. misuse it. Yes, he was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. awesome. So this is kind of the, the shirt you guys have had in the past. Talk about, about talk a little bit about the shirt you guys have uh, at the moment. Yeah, you guys have a pretty sweet shirt ah, yeah. going with right now. Oh, it's a really sweet shirt. Hey, what is that you guys are wearing? Oh, oh wow. Oh, I didn't see you there. Oh, that? <laughs> oh wow. That's a nice shirt you got. Hello, on. America. I didn't, I didn't see you there. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello. Yeah. We, um, I just wore this today on accident. <laughs> oh, no. As did James. We never wear the same shirt. Yeah, well, Russell thought he was shirtless until just now. Yeah. I, th- I thought I was just... <laughs> This is Man, the weirdest is episode a, ever. This is the worst gay podcast we're on. <laughs> yeah. we, uh, I usually do the shirt uh, shirtless. I do it. Usually. That's where all the views come from. Right? Yeah. Uh, so we, we were wondering why it's so popular. We're so big. Yeah. <laughs> we. Uh, so so I mean, really, to, to take it back, all of our shirts, almost all of our shirts, have been specifically tied to giving to um, a particular, whether it be to a particular person or organization that. Uh, that was due that had a ministry that we were we were, were really desirous to be able to support and assist in their ministry uh, frontline well. ministries correct and um and we really wanted to try to do a better job focusing uh this year if we were gonna if we were going to continue to move forward which god could god kept telling us we we apparently couldn't just stop which would have been you know super fantastic for like sleep and our time but that's how yeah. god, he kept saying no this is we're gonna keep we're gonna keep going. I'm like, all right okay um we wanted to try to focus uh, on a different organization. Obviously, things come up, but we wanted yeah. to try to focus on a particular organization or ministry every month. And uh, we had uh, the awesome connections with with uh, with Rachel already, and we're like, "Hey, what about those crazy nuts over at Free the States?" <laughs> yeah, they're nuts. They probably are. They're probably having a hard time getting money. <laughs> Good deduction. <laughs> Let's do something. <laughs> like, I, I want that program. I bet nobody's supporting them. <laughs> Let's sabotage. Can we sabotage? But they're no I'm kidding. Um, we, and we, uh, we, you know, we, got, we, we reached out through through her. We got connected to to you, Russ, and love talking about design stuff. And now here we 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 know you, James, and it, this is blossomed into this beautiful thing. Had Dusty Devers on who. Yep. Uh, I keep forgetting the name of his rescue episode. those rescue those rescue gosh those. darn it yeah yep. um so uh so yeah we wanted to make a, a t-shirt that could help not only push people in the direction of understanding what the heck is abolition what do you keep yeah. keep saying this word on sl- didn't we get rid of slavery and uh, uh, we can kind of re-explain that but uh, also <laughs> depends on who you ask anymore <laughs> Yeah, we're not going there. Nope. Do not sorry. Steer us sorry. Again. So sorry. So sorry. Yeah. Go over the wheel, Jesse. Do not steer. We, us do, we can do a whole other episode on it. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I've got all night. <laughs> but uh, uh, but we really wanted to 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 be able to support the ministry you guys are doing because um, well, I, it's it, it's essentially a biblical frontline ministry. So I don't yeah. think there's too much more that needs to be said about that. Yeah, really. well, we're super appreciative. I mean, I, I I'm assuming this shirt's going to sell pretty well because it looks nice and. Beautiful. It's actually a really awesome looking shirt. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's great. Like, and, and and honestly, from someone who's probably designed, <laughs> oh, I don't know how many shirts that I've had to design, you know, you kind of tired of it. You go to an abolitionist conference and you're like, some of you guys don't like me here, but you're all wearing my shirts. <laughs> 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 Just like, it's like all y'all are wearing. Like, I did ha- I've had to design a lot of shirts because there's either uh, a, a lack of, designers out there or a lack of confidence or maybe they think I'm like a tyrant and I'm the only one allowed to design shirts. So 
whenever uh, I think whenever you guys I mean, first, it, it could just be that the quality of work that you produce is is pretty good. Exceptional. That's what it is. Well, I mean. you know, thanks, but sometimes it's not. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> I look at a shirt and I'm like, well, I bombed on that one. But um, <laughs> but no, whenever it's already in pre-press, we're done. <laughs> yeah, they've already made the screen. Print 250 of them. Screens uh, are burnt, guys. Let's roll. <laughs> put it, I don't know. Kids will wear it. But uh, no, whenever the the uh, chat group started and Rachel was talking about it, at first it was kind of like, well, you guys want to send me it. And I and I was designing something. And I was like, wait a second. Y'all, y'all stuff's good, and it looks different than mine. It'll be great for there to be an abolitionist shirt that doesn't look like all the other abolitionist shirts. <laughs> and, you know, this one does look like all the other. <laughs> no, it's, it's and obviously, we realize this is not it. <laughs> yeah, no, this is great. It's, it's obviously a different um, artist. You know, you can tell an artist from their style and it's just, it's a good clean design. And um, you guys came up with it and you, you put our logo on it and I think we like it. So good yeah, job. Very, nice. very even good work. The, even the back, even the back came out really nice. I, everything about yeah. this shirt actually, it just it sometimes stuff just looks it just looks good so yeah we, we like to create shirts that are going to cause people to have awkward conversations all yeah. awkward bible <laughs> biblical conversations yeah. yeah and this shirt most certainly does that um in spades and that's that's really the goal yeah uh, R- a bold R- shirt R- <laughs> rachel was telling me you you had a you had a good interaction at, at disney world did you have any not good interactions when you were wearing this shirt at disney world or was it just a good one we had, se- we had several good interactions oh really uh, yeah, we. I don't. I didn't have a bad interaction with. No, no one. Look, here's the here's the dirty secret about our culture. Uh, anyone who didn't like our shirt is entirely too much a coward to actually yeah. say they didn't like. They our might. Shirt. They talked about you like on TikTok or Instagram yeah. or something. Yeah, in yeah, a picture, yeah. and they got all strong against you on social media. They went back, but they're scared to death of talking like, to you. Did you see that guy that doesn't want abortion? Oh, he just makes me yeah. so angry. He hates women. That's what they yeah. do back in the private Oppre- Oppressor. Of course, you know, it's a white man with a mohawk. A white man, yeah. <laughs> no, we had several. Or a white man with uh, a beard, sorry. Yeah. Uh, had the, this guy, Zane, came up. Man, I love that. This was at the pool. I wasn't even wearing the shirt. I had the shirt, but I did. I did. He displayed it 100%. <laughs> 100%. 100%. 100%. On the chair, yeah. Very yeah. obviously on the back. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm swimming in the pool, but I can't have my shirt on. And the guy's like, oh, man, I really love that. I really love that abortion shirt you got. Where'd you get it? I was like, funny, you should ask. <laughs> From in myself. my attic right now. <laughs> yeah. Go to carbafide.com slash shop and get that shirt. It supports uh, Free the States, which is an uh, abortion abolitionist movement. And, uh, we're, you know, to end abortion. You, you'll, wow. you'll love it. Yeah, it happens a uh, lot. I did have uh, very recently, not with this shirt, because I just got this like two days ago. But it was another shirt. But this shirt's going to do the same thing because it's blatant. People can't see the back. It says abolish abortion on the back, you know, and there was one time I wore a shirt that said abortion is sin. Uh, I, I can't remember what it said. Abortion is sin. And it had like the gospel on the back and I went and got my hair cut and I was sitting there getting my hair cut and I was just terrified, you know, that I was getting stabbed <laughs> in the neck or whatever. So shirts can't put you in, put you in these positions. But the other day I went to a seven 11 with a gas station and I was wearing a shirt. It was like an incarnation of Christ shirt. And the guy literally told me, I know what your shirt means. And I'm offended. Like you're evil. And I was like, <laughs> I'll have this Twix. And you know, like, I, and I tried to talk to him. And he's like, no, I don't even want, to, I know what you do. I know what you're going to say. I don't even want you talking to me. But it's just like a, a front. And it was like the first time in a long time where someone just kind of came out and said, I hate your shirt. It's light. I'm darkness. Most of the yeah. time, it is people coming up and saying, wow, I can't believe you're wearing that shirt. Good on you. You, you know, and you I'm like, sh- you should wear one too. <laughs> yeah. You had a shirt that talked about the incarnation of Christ and someone was, was so ticked off about it that they told you. They yeah, no, it was, a, it says uh, the son of, what does it say? Jesus Christ. Uh, the reason the son of God appeared was to destroy the works of yeah. the devil. John 1, yep. 9, or first John 1, oh, 9. Uh, yep. And so, and it says that, and it's not really clear that it's abortion, but like this, uh, I think, uh, he was a guy biologically. Um, this person <laughs> just straight up, like just told me, like, I hate you because I know what your shirt means. Like he knew that it was a, this is in Oklahoma and I, there was like an AHA symbol on it. So I think that he probably had some kind of connection with that. But in a, in a way there was a person behind me and I, you know, I tried to talk to the guy 
and he, he told me like, get out of my line, get out of my store sort of thing. But I think for all the other people in the gas station, they just see, oh, some Christian was being bold and had the word Jesus Christ on his shirt. And so I think that, yeah, I mean, it seems like a silly thing, but putting a really bold message, I can't remember what y'all's thing. What is it? <laughs> bold Christian messages. Yeah. <clears throat> getting That's Christians. It, some people, I mean, we just take it for granted, but some people are terrified to wear these mm. kinds of shirts. You know, yeah. they've lost. It's true. They don't even defy uh, bad ideas in the way no, they, not, they not dress. Even bad, yeah, not even bad ideas. Yeah. Not, not even kind of bad ideas. Yeah, yeah, Horrible it's true. Ideas. We were when when we went down to G three, we we had the, the the absolute honor to meet James Coates and and mm-hmm. chat with uh, chat with Aaron as well. And awesome. Maybe stop by the booth. It was funny because they, they kept losing one another, and so like <laughs> one of them would pop up at our booth. They're like, "Hey, is, is James around? Like, have you seen?" Him? Like, That's no. a Canadian thing. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, are we are we, are we just like the the Canada hub here? But uh, <laughs> it, it was it was fantastic. But um. But like, yeah, like we would tell people, they're like, oh man, that's really, really cool. And it's like, you know what? You, you can do this. You yeah, can, you can wear one too. Like we, we've got blurbs on, on, on our web pages that, that tell about what the shirt is, a little bit about the history, maybe some scripture. Um, you know, like, like this one's got, got a verse from Psalms on it. Uh, mm-hmm. We've got another hold the line shirt that's got um, a verse from Daniel on it when uh, Shadrach, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not uh, bow the knee to yep. Nebuchadnezzar. I mean, <clears throat> real easy passages, real easy messages that you, you can, you, listen, you, you know your fantasy football team roster. You can know what the shirt's about and you can articulate yeah. it to another human being. Yeah. Even if that's all you articulate, that's yeah. perfectly fine, you know, and then the more conversations you have, the, the more natural it becomes. And then, you know, next thing you know, you're, you know, standing in front of an abortion clinic and, you know, getting the word out there, you know, like, it's just, we're trying to make the avenue for people to actually engage in those conversations. So with a verse and a message uh, and, and just a simplistic minimalist image, you can engage someone who's like, Oh, that's a cool shirt. And well, it's more than just a cool shirt. I mean, you can simply say, yeah, "Yeah, this, this is because we, uh, we, we believe that we're going to serve God no matter whether, whether he's, whether he gives us what we want or not, we're going to serve him. You know, it's a simple message to walk here. That's what it says here, Daniel. You know, it's just something to engage with. You know, this is this is because when God has has knitted a child together in the womb to kill that is murder. And we're not yeah. going to do that. That's what this verse in Psalm says. I mean, something these are just simple ways. You don't need to be a rocket scientist. And you don't need yeah. to have read through the Bible three times in a year to wear a shirt that makes someone engage you in a conversation. Yeah, because it's a cool looking shirt. And who doesn't want to wear You're going to wear a cool looking shirt anyway. You must wear one that actually engages with the gospel yeah. or the Bible. I mean, geez. Yeah. 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 And, and Providence you know, like God is always working on people and you don't really know it. And, you know, sometimes, you know, you could be just in a line wearing a shirt and it says something and you don't realize that someone else is in that gas station and they've got an abortion appointment or something. And they've been, they've been, they've been struggling and they're like, God, give me a sign. And they go to buy, you know, a Coke and there's someone wearing a thou shalt not murder shirt or something like that. God does. I mean, being in this work for a decade or so, I've heard those stories so frequently. It's just the faithfulness of someone to put on a shirt or to hold a sign or to drop a card. And when you think how many Christians are not doing that, yeah, it's pretty sad. And I think a lot of them are just, yeah, they're, they're kind of like what you're, they're scared, but it's not really hard whenever God's no. like, he's the one who's there to help you. I mean, he's yep. our helper. And so, yeah, yeah I mean, we, I would encourage people. I don't think I, I mean, I have some shirts that are not, you know, I have a shirt that says T-Rex hates pushups. <laughs> no, so one's ever, true. no one, you know, <laughs> to me, that's deeply theological, but, um, I, you know, <laughs> that's for another podcast. Yeah. It's a different, that's after we well, abolish abortion. It's funny because going to, going to the airport, I was wearing my, my praise the Lord and pass the ammunition t-shirt. Well, that's a good one to wear at the airport. Yeah. And it's funny because the, the security, the uh, agent, I guess they're actually agents. They're not like officers. TSA the, people. P- T- TSA. Yeah. The TSA blue gloves. Agent. Yes. He was, he was, you know, the guy mine that, didn't wear gloves. Oh no. <laughs> it was not a, that was not a TSA agent. <laughs> yeah. That was just some weirdo at the airport. You need, they don't have some blue gloves on. 
He said he was a proctologist. All right, we're gonna stop. <laughs> so he, we're, we're walking up to the. We're walking up. Carpe to fide, the, not the liberator podcast. <laughs> we're, walking up, we're walking up to the conveyor belt to put all your to put all your things in the belo- your belongings and take yep. off your belt and your shoes and everything else. Yep. And the guy's like, "Wait, what's your shirt say?" Someone's this TSA agent. Like, and he read. I see him read the whole thing word for word. He's like, "Oh man, I love that shirt." And he gives me a pound. And he moves on. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, "Oh, this is great. All right, this, like, this is going to be okay. I'm not going to get cavity yeah. searched today." Got in my yeah. fist, gave me my Glock back, and I got on the plane. <laughs> yeah. The TSA agent likes your Defy Tyrant shirt, and you're kind of like, "What you doing, bro? What's uh, what do you what are you doing?" Right. No, he's like, "You're part of the problem, sir. You're part of the problem." He's like, "I just make it he's easier like, for people I'm a to mission, give him a I'm a missionary in this field." <laughs> Look, he's like, somebody's got, there should be at least one TSA agent that makes it easy to get on the gosh darn plane. I mean, yeah. gee, it's like, I'm doing you a service, guys. I've had some good, TSA agents get get a lot of flack. I've had some good ones, you know, that are like that, oh, yeah. that like shirts or I was yeah, going yeah. through an airport with like uh, uh, a yeah. 80 pound bag full of uh, fake money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And they always That's stop. True. They always stop, and they're like, "Look at it." And they're like, "What is this?" And you know, it's fake. It's uh, fake money. <laughs> yeah, it's it's <laughs> fake currency. It's twenty dollar bills. It's literal twenty dollar bills with Harriet Tubman <laughs> on them. She's not on the twenty yet, but she's gonna be. But like, and they're just kind of look at you, and you know that like if they were bad people, they could probably stop you. Like, what's going on here? <laughs> but I've had yeah, look the other way. Like, let this guy. I'm like, they're, they're just thinking, here. get this guy out of here. <laughs> yeah. He's going to start a riot. And then for he's the not, next, he's not, and he's for not the next six hours, people. they were picking up those bills all over the airport. <laughs> <laughs> and some guy's like, I should have stopped him. But. <laughs> the thing of it is, it's like, you're not, you're not scary crazy. You're just like, don't want to talk to you anymore. Crazy. <laughs> he's just weird. Crazy. Just move him along. Move along. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I always, I, I do find it funny whenever the TSA agent, like, pulls the the obvious you know oklahoma white oklahoma guy we better we better search him yeah <laughs> like, your, your eyes were open a little too wide when you were walking it's through. like, <laughs> it's like well, the beard is short what are you doing your racial profiling is opposite at the tsa sometimes anyway we, we we're going a lot of rabbit trails with you guys i think it's my i fault. don't even buy fertilizer <laughs> I do Sorry. buy a lot Sorry. of fertilizer. Yeah. Uh oh. Well, that's recorded for now. my garden. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Don't forget, they can own like acres of land over there. We've got our, you know, half a quarter acre, which is one eighth, eighth yeah. of an acre. You're doing a great job, buddy. You're doing good. <laughs> yeah. I'm, All hey, right. Next question. Now the guy. <laughs> so you're telling me the guy who designs things can't do math? No, no, no. no, that, no. I'm with you, bro. I can count. Well. <laughs> Counting is listen. We all know that fractions were the hardest thing to learn as children. Okay, yeah, I've heard at least like decimals were harder. One in one in. I can't. I can't do it. I'm like, <laughs> 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 gonna try. We we so edit, we edit out all math co- conversations from this. Five program, out of so. four people can't do fractions. Yeah. <laughs> He's the one actually with the with the math degree as well. Wow. I do have an associates in math. Yes, and I have a BS and BS. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A bachelor's of Science in Biblical Studies. It's actually a BS and BS. Oh, it's kind of funny. wow. Another T-shirt. Yeah, it's kind of funny. You can, From a Christian you university. The one guy who wears it. <laughs> yeah, someone should have looked at that a little closer. Guys, we're giving out a BS in BS here at this Bible <laughs> university. We, we should probably not. Can we change <laughs> this? <laughs> Sounds like the Babylon yeah. Bee. It, does, right. it really does. does. Yeah, yeah, most of my life is the Babylon Bee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so but back to the shirt here. If someone wants to get the shirt, where do they go to, to pick it up? That's easy. They can go to. We're gonna do. I was gonna. I was just okay. waiting for you to start it. Okay. Yeah, they can go to carpefide.com slash shop. Oh, that was well done. Wow, you guys have done Man. that before. <laughs> we we are pretty good at unison. Yeah. We there have been. We we started an episode one time, and we I started singing a little jingle, and Justin actually joined in, and the jingle went perfectly. No, completely unrehearsed. <laughs> I'll have to. Fi- I'll find the link. I'll and then, and then it was like weirdly embarrassing. Like right after it, you finished, you're like proud, but like, also embarrassed. <laughs> it was very strange. You look at each other like, how did that happen? Yeah. <laughs> Just don't know how it happened. It's like so, a musical. So, <laughs> so carpefide.com. That's C-A-R-P-E-F-I-D-E.com. Yeah. Why slash are you reading shop. it out loud? We have it written like right here. Oh, yeah. I forgot. I'm sorry. I forgot that it's right there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm not good with the. I'm not good with the production thing. Oh, it's literally <laughs> behind me as well. 
Oh, yeah, and there's the name. Just put a dot .com with that. Just put a dot .com slash Friday. shop at the end. But don't put the C's I'm the fake. here for fee day. All right. Yeah. My Brad favorite book was... <laughs> yeah, yeah. My, my favorite book was John Piper's Brothers, We Are Not Professionals. Or <laughs> Anyway. Right. Took it um, very, so you didn't read it, but the cover, you're like, good. <laughs> yeah, good book. I bought good this book. for the cover, and it's I so true. To this. <laughs> um, so yeah, you can you can head to our site. Um, at we at, we're actually doing a ten percent of anything that you uh, purchase on our site. Uh, we'll go over to to uh, free the states this month. So everyone, uh, go so buy everything. Everything you, you could buy. Everything it is it is a great way if you want to support free the states. All you can buy any shirt that you'd like. It's not a problem. But you definitely get this really really awesome abolitionist yeah. shirt because it's really cool yeah, yeah. It, uh, it just visually is a very appealing it is a very appealing yeah. shirt yeah. can i ask you guys a question do you guys uh print a lot of them and sell them or do you uh have a way of printing only what people order what a great question um because sometimes you get stuck with like a lot of shirt like sometimes you get stuck and you're like man we really need to sell these shirts we we put eight grand into these shirts um Sometimes you are like that, and sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you do have to get admitted to a mental hospital to deal with your anxiety and crippling depression. No, I'm just no. kidding. Every, here's the best part. So, so because because we view everything. No, that's as, not where I was last July. Guys. Okay. <laughs> Might have been TMI. Actually. Uh, we were because we view everything as a ministry. Um, we're we look to be able to be very generous. So, I mean, we've given so much stuff just straight away, just giving it away. Uh, whenever we're actually going to give something to Canada, if there's anyone that we feel could benefit from being supported with a couple of t-shirts or geez, we just randomly send books up or <laughs> just, uh, yeah. just dozens of stickers. And so the whole idea is to be a ministry of, of to the church so that the church and, and ministries are supported. Um, but, but how we run printing, like on a practical side, um, we usually start with, you know, smaller batch orders. We work with a local printer. Um, it allows us to know our quality because uh, there's nothing worse than buying a graphic T-shirt from somebody and then the letters peel off of the graphic T-shirt because you love yeah. it so much and word a lot and the letters just peel off. Just pro tip, everybody, when you buy a graphic T-shirt and you're going to wash it, flip it inside out before you wash it. That's a pro tip for everyone. Oh, good. That's yeah. We'll write that. We'll um, put that on our T-shirts on our website. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Turn inside out before yeah, you wash but, it. But you don't have to do that with our shirts. No, but you should. It just makes the shirt last longer. Everyone should do that. It's just always. But you do don't that. have to. No, you because don't. Our shirts. You don't. So we're able to work with uh, work with them really tightly on quality <laughs> um, as far as the shirts that we use and also the designs and the colors and the the way we're doing. So yeah. like we hate it when we hate it when you can feel. Yeah. Like you get that thick feel. Whereas this is a much lighter feel that moves with the shirt. We like that. I don't know. We're just weird little things. Um, so he works weird really little things like well. rubbing your brother's chest, like while you're talking. We're very close. <laughs> we, we, uh, we <laughs> nervous we, laughter. <laughs> we, <laughs> so we we uh, we are. I mean, we really do. We tend to order uh, you know smaller quantities um, so that we're not putting out uh, a ton into it. Because again, pretty much everything that comes in goes. Anything that comes in, it's not going directly out into giving yeah. is just going back into trying to, you know, get more stock for the yep. next thing we're going to do. Yep. Um, and so, you know, smaller quantities, at least, at least allow yeah. us to maintain that a little better. Um, so, I mean, like initial run might be 75 to 100 of a particular shirt yeah. um, and, and then move from there. I mean, if you're talking practicality, uh, just just yeah. everybody knows you don't make money on T-shirts unless you're selling. Yeah thousands and, and thousands and, and sometimes the same design. <laughs> except yeah I mean, it's like for a sports team those people make money on t-shirts but yeah yep yeah but like uh, so people who don't print t-shirts don't understand like it, there is sort of a ministry to it because you are you're usually like the we'll we'll print a t-shirt it's just to get a message out there you know we're not keeping the lights on by selling t-shirts but sometimes right. you have to invest in printing a t-shirt and you don't really get that money back um, for Correct. a while, like if you're, if you're buying like 500 or a thousand of a shirt, um, oh, yeah. but you have to do it that way to be able to sell it for a certain price so people can get it, you know, time and energy, printing it, talking to the printers, mm -hmm. shipping, all that kind of stuff. It's a lot, it's more work than you would think. And oh, it yeah. is Isn't a ministry. So people, yeah, and the, the designer there is like, uh-huh. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm the designer, the shipper and the customer service. Unless I'm sleeping and then Justin will do customers. Man, so Justin, <laughs> you don't do anything. Hey, Justin, you're like 
You're like me. <laughs> <laughs> you give me 8 million yeah. ideas and I have to filter through no. which ones actually are good. <laughs> yeah. That's not true. I uh, I am the contact on our order, on our, our ordering. Well, much. I didn't want to. Yeah. Make, I didn't we, want to get you guys to a fight. I was just look. Let's order. not get into a fight. I'm all. I'm. I'm all the ideas. I am the. I am the. the <laughs> I am the decision maker. I am the <laughs> anything you don't want to do. I. You do the things you 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 don't want to do. You give to me. Yeah. When it comes to fighting, if I can catch you, I'll win. That's not true either. <laughs> <laughs> you know well, that's not even true. No, but I, it. but I can transform into the fetal position very, yeah, very quickly. This is where we you cut can. away and show like some video of you guys chasing each other. And <laughs> <laughs> you've never seen a human armadillo better than Jesse. Just like a, just a ball. Just nothing's getting in. You don't have to win if you can take a hit. I'm just, <laughs> just, say, just outlast them. No, another T-shirt. <laughs> just you in the fetal position with, as an armadillo outlast the human them. armadillo just outlast them Defy I, would, I would no, i would be honored insane. if you ross could draw me in a fetal position i, I feel like there's no other person on earth i, oh. I feel like i could qualify to I draw like me I in could, a fetal position i could do it i think that um i think it has my, to happen now my co-workers though if they were like hey why isn't that thing that has purpose done it's like well i've been really trying to get him in the field position. The bar, Carpe ah. fide. He wants a picture gonna, of We're going to put it on a internet meme for one day. Um, yeah, no. Why does I, that one have a beard, Ross? Why does that one? <laughs> it's a bearded armadillo in a fetal position. What did you do with six hours of your day? How did you serve God? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. So, no, it, it's good. Different people do different things. You know, I don't know how to uh, fulfill an order, but I know how to design a t shirt. And there are people who don't know how to design a t-shirt, but they know how to fulfill orders. So we all work together, but it, but anyway, back to it, it is, it is a ministry and, and it is, you are, you guys are helping people and, you know, with the funding and helping people that really need it. And that's awesome that you do it. You don't have to do that, but also better, better than that. You're getting the A-bomb out there. I appreciate that, <laughs> you know, getting people to like identify in our culture of death as abolitionist. That yes, this is not just a personal moral opinion. I'm not just pro life. I want to abolish it for other people. You know, it should be criminalized. And getting people to wear something like that, getting them into the conversations, you know, getting it out there. You know, I appreciate it. I love you guys for that. Oh, is we 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 are really appreciative of what you guys are doing. And and like like we like we said, we we know that not everybody can do the same thing inside of the movement. Not everybody's going to be. Uh, a hand and everybody's going to be an eye and we understand how that works and and where we can we are we are very very thankful to be able to engage and i think uh making people uncomfortable in the supermarket as they read our t-shirt is a great way that we're able to i was i was standing in line getting this uh mickey's 50th anniversary funnel cake and there was this lady (laughs) trying to figure out which funnel cake she wanted i noticed on her phone it was like, uh, you know, something for reproductive justice. And I'm just like, I'm just like looking at her and I'm like trying not to swallow awkwardly because she was close enough that I know that she could hear me if I like, <laughs> she, could, yeah. she could sense my nervousness. And I'm just standing there like, I really just want this funnel cake right now. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to get into it right now. Yeah. There's kids. You're doing a, your co- cost benefit analysis, share the gospel, get a funnel cake. Get a funnel cake. I'm a fallen man. <laughs> The funnel cake was so good; it had two Oreos on it with chocolate. But anyway, I did not get into a tussle with the reproductive uh, with the reproductive justice lady. It's okay, Jesse. Everybody battles their own demons. Okay, you know yeah. what? <laughs> Keep fighting that funnel cake, man. <laughs> Gotta get that funnel cake. I leaned over to her and I'm like, "If you have to put anything in front of justice, it's not justice." And then I ran. <laughs> <laughs> we, we your funnel cake. There's like powdered sugar flying. Yeah, you. Sugar. Another <laughs> shirt. It's you on the front, <laughs> running with a funnel cake, and then on the back in the fetal position. Yeah, yeah, as an armadillo. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm going to sell beaten, precisely beaten, two of these by shirts. By the lady. This little yeah, lady yeah, beating little you. Lady. The powdered sugar all in her eyes. You can't see. Anyway. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Man. So, all right. So, so there are so gonna, much to learn from There's going to be some people who are going to see this and be like, man, I don't know if I want to go see this podcast. But there will be a lot of people who see this and, and think, I do want to go see more of this podcast. I want to go see more more, uh, more Jesse in, in, the, in the fetal position jokes and stuff. So. <laughs> Honestly, so. we, do a, we do a pretty good job of being formatted on our podcast. So it, <laughs> usually it is very funny yeah. um, and very engaging, but it is also pretty – we get some pretty deep 
pretty deep content. So yeah. it's very yeah. enjoyable. No, I've listened to a few. Uh, it's really good stuff. So for people who do want to go listen to you guys, where do they go to to find you? I'm trying, I'm trying to think if you know the URL well enough. Oh, yes, yes. To say this in unison. Go oh, for it. No, it's very no, simple. Go to wherever you get podcasts and type in Carpe Fide. That's, that's there you go. Pretty do. simple. It's the only one. There's no <laughs> other Carpe Fide. So it's very yeah. simple. If you listen on Spotify, if you listen on Pocket Cast, wherever you listen, just type in yeah. Carpe Fide and there it is. Done. Yeah. Boom. Boom. Uh, you can also, if you're, if you don't, do apps. <laughs> you listen to apps, but if you don't, if you listen based off the internet, I'm not laughing at you. Which is just, fine. Just Go to a website, and listen away. See, you guys don't realize fine. you're just making fun of me. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Oh. No, but but here we have a way for you to listen, Russ. <laughs> okay. Yeah. How do if, I? If you go, I don't do apps. We have an embedded player I guess I right on our, our website. It's okay. Don't How worry. How does the Russell Hunter listen? Yeah. The yeah. Russell Hunter would go to <laughs> carpefide.com/episodes. And they'll be all right there for you. And you can listen nice. right in the in the web page. You don't have to go out of it, Russ. It's going to be yeah. okay. And, this, and then we'll know that that one web page listen was from the Russ. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and that's, you guys do a video and audio, right? No, we don't. Just no, audio? This, this face, this face <laughs> is made for podcasting only. Audio <laughs> only. Okay? Audio no. only. Yeah, I no, think we, literally audio only because I'm, I would be the one that would have to put all the videos. You have to edit the video. Yeah. Bitch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sam, Sam ends up losing two days of his life every week to editing videos. And so I apologize. I just apologize okay. to Sam in advance right now. Sam's doing God's work for, for us all. Yeah. <laughs> We're not going to edit a single thing. Mate. Well, <laughs> maybe the math. We can edit that out. Yeah. Some TSA <laughs> stuff. Uh, definitely some TSA that, stuff. There was a proctology oh. joke in there that wow. might have oh, been. There's again. nothing wrong with proctology. <laughs> We're not editing any of this out. Sam, don't edit any of this out. As a nurse, <laughs> it is an important aspect of your health. If you're over 40, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, this, this has been fun. <laughs> yeah. And I bet you your podcast is always fun <laughs> and always deep. And I do appreciate Yeah, sometimes we get really passionate. Do. and really. Re- sometimes the passion bubble is really like right up front there. Um, but, but most okay. we do also try to have fun. So it's good. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't, whenever podcasts first were a thing, I'd always, someone would send it to me and I'd listen and the, the guys would just sit around and tell jokes and make each other laugh for like the first 15 or 20 minutes before they got into anything. And it just drove me nuts. I was like, I'm not going to listen to any podcasts. I don't want these people talking and having a good time. We kind of just did that. <laughs> but we, just, talk, we got, deep. I was going to say, are you Ebenezer Scrooge? Like, yeah. I heard a Christmas present. Like, what yeah, I was like, why are these people having fun? Children are dying. A sad person. Yeah. Well, the important thing is to yeah. make sure you're laughing and having jokes that everyone can laugh at. Yeah. I always get, it always gets weird to me when I'm listening to a podcast from like people that have just known each other forever and they're just talking to each other uh-huh. and it's, and the, all their jokes are inside jokes and everything <laughs> is just based around. And then I'm like, all right, guys, no, really, I can't relate to this. Can we get to somewhere that I can at least, like, I'd love to laugh with you, but I don't know what the heck's going on. Like, it has to be something everyone can laugh at. And who can't yeah. laugh at a proctology joke, man? I can pick that out. Oh my you want to edit that out? Yeah. I, I say it enough times. There's no way you're going to get all the proctologies out of this, okay? <laughs> yeah, because we can't. Because you can't, you can't edit if it's at the end. That's you right. got to edit that out in the beginning. And people so are going to be like. Just stuck. We could leave it in there and people will be like, man, there was a proctology joke, but I don't know what it was. Yeah. When you guys are abolitionists. Something, something about blue deal. gloves. <laughs> blue gloves. <laughs> it's like my mind was like, yeah, never mind. Blue gloves. <laughs> all all right. I know is that joke would go over great in every abolitionist, with every abolitionist I know, all right? <laughs> 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 We're going to get a message from someone. <laughs> no, no. no. We, but we, we do get, promise that if the topic is in the title, we touch on it at least once. Uh, yeah, uh, usually a lot. We we yeah. usually have a nice outline. So yeah. just check, go by the topics, listen to the ones you want. Yeah. Um, we started really strong. We love to hit education hard. We believe the family is an integral building block of society yeah. and culture, and the church yeah. needs to regain its footing uh, in the the war for the family. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. So that's one we talk talk on a lot. Um, which is an organic abolitionist talking point, really, when you yeah. think about it, the family. So. Oh yeah. Are you guys? I guess I shouldn't ask a question. I don't know the answer to. It's like this. But are you are are you guys able to come to abolition now, February fifth through eighth? All these abolitionists are asking us to go. No, we're not able to. <laughs> I, mean, I, I was gonna say because if no. you came, you could bring all your swag and all that kind of stuff. But I was. We I, would, I didn't know. and we would. I know. Loved we to we do. tried. The reason tried I was the thing. reason I bring it up is because abolitionist conferences are awesome because there's just like kids everywhere. Just like, which is beautiful. It's just beautiful. Nice. These big families, these kids just are, you know, 
so having to listen to like six hours of abolitionist teaching, like, you know, <laughs> we're, we're going to print coloring pages for them. I'm like printing out artwork for them to color abolitionist themed nice. coloring book stuff. And, um, but no, it's, it's good. Cause you see, Hey, lo and behold, the people who are what an abolitionist theme coloring page was. I did. Didn't you? I knew you I'm did. like, I'm like, is the, <laughs> do you just hand, do you just hand out like packs of red crayon? <laughs> 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 no, I'm not gonna have the children's uh, coloring abortion images. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Oh, oh, <laughs> that's no. that's like, all I was wondering. I was like, like this is a like grotesque <laughs> like dragon slayers. Come on, you know. Oh, yeah, that yeah, one's yeah, way yeah, better. Like yeah, that, you know. Way like, that's excellent. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's just like yeah, you're just like we're exposing evil. Like, can you explain why my eight year old came home with this? <laughs> <laughs> Like, do you want to sanitize the truth from your child? Yeah, Is that what you truth sounds do? like hate People to those who hate truth. <laughs> no, but yeah, the there, it lo and behold, the people who are fighting to protect their preborn neighbors also tend to, you know, love children and you know, integrate them into what they're doing. So, Amen. our Amen. conferences are our big family affairs, so we don't That's discourage awesome. that at all. Yeah. We would have, we would have definitely, loved. I know it's definitely on our radar for whenever this happens next. Yeah. Should the Lord continue to, uh, to desire yeah. for us to be, be used fruitful, yeah. we will, we will certainly enjoy going yeah. to, uh, them in the future, but we yeah. don't have to be perfect yeah. feeding to go. We can no, just, we like, can just go. go to it. You know, we can just go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll try to have something closer to New Jersey. Yeah. Please don't just, you know what? <laughs> Let's just, we like, we love to go to Oklahoma. That sounds great. We met such a, we met a two awesome sisters at G3 from Oklahoma, uh, whose father's, who, whose father was a pastor of a church, wanted to, uh, to open up and remain open. And he was told he couldn't, and they let him go after 20 years of service to that church as pastor. Oh and ministry. Wow. Um, and we got to give, we, we gave them, uh, a shirt to take to him and just had such a lovely conversation. And we've been able to connect on Instagram. We've been able to talk with them several times. So we love, we would love to get out to Oklahoma. Don't you, don't you change a thing. You don't got to worry about us. Okay? We'll get there. <laughs> yeah. It was just timing this time. It was just about a matter of timing with our vacation. That's okay. You, you can birthday. cancel your vacation and come. It's cool. I'll see you on February 5th to the 8th. <laughs> yeah. <I'm just> <laughs> my wife was like, my wife was like, I don't know. I just don't know if Oklahoma is the place I want to go for to celebrate my birthday. And I'm like, I I understand. There's lots of space, <laughs> lots of sky. It's flat. There's nothing to do except for to abolish abortion. <laughs> and they and apparently they, they can't even get the legislators to do that. There's no, nothing to do. We're, get, we're getting oh, the legislators to do oh, no. more than the, we're getting more legislators on board all the time. But we'll talk about that well, in a future episode. Yeah. That sounds nice. Yeah. yeah. That's on, the, excellent. on the topic of plug. Yeah. yeah. I, to I was sneaking it in there. I, I, I knew you guys weren't coming. I was just going <laughs> to. Just deny oh. it. I actually didn't know <laughs> the the church that we're hosting it is the, is the church where I go and uh, it's Edmonds First Baptist and the pastor this morning uh, Blake Gideon he he basically he he kind of said I want you all to go and it was awesome because it's a it's a large it's church huge, yeah. and uh, you know he he's the sort of you know every church has kind of the their the the token abolitionist guy. Well, he, he happens to be the pastor at that church. He's, <laughs> he's the one that's like, you know, getting people to go to the abortion mill and all that kind of stuff. So it's really good. So that is a plug. Edmonds First Baptist is, is hosting the Abolition Now Conference, February 5th through the 8th. Um, by the time this episode airs, it'll only be a couple of weeks away. Yep. Register, come, uh, participate. Good learning, good teaching. And there'll be an Abolition Day rally February 8th at the Oklahoma State Capitol. And we need thousands of people to show up to tell the legislators, Hey, we're not here to give you roses for regulating abortion. We want you to criminalize abortion. That's what we are demanding of you as we, the people. So um, please participate that it's more important than you know and understand um, that you are seen and heard as abolitionists specifically. So they'll pass bills of abolition instead of pass yet another six to 10 pro-life bills that do nothing. So. Yep. Yep. Amen. So, yeah. Amen. That's that's the that's the way we plug our conferences. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. I was taking notes for when we launched the Carpe Fide conference. What are we going to be abolishing? Wait, no, we're we're fideing. Oh, what are we? <laughs> You're going to be seizing the faith. <laughs> I was very yeah. confused. But their yeah. but their name is the Liberator Podcast. But their conference is the they're abolishing abortion. <laughs> but what? 
You guys can have a mm. subtitle. Our conference is called Repent With Us. Okay, there oh. you go. That's great. Okay. We got okay. layers. Repent With Us, the Abolition Now conference, hosted by Free the States and a whole right. bunch of Liberty Rising and Rescue yeah, Those. Yeah. There's a lot of abolitionist organizations in Oklahoma doing a lot of good work. We could, yeah. be, pl- we could be plugging all day. Storm comes rolling down the plane. The DVD is yeah, just no, available. Go watch, go watch the movie. Go watch the. the Have you guys movie. seen that? Sure. You should. Uh, no, because we literally found out it existed and then went away to Disney for a week. <laughs> That's pretty much how that worked. No, I I knew it existed. When you didn't it came tell out. me. No. Yeah. I was gonna go to Disney World, but instead I watched a storm comes rolling down the plane. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? One of I make you guys feel us, real great right now. One of us may have had a, a better time watching that movie <laughs> so it may be the truth yeah and everyone else I, I think everyone should see that and not go to disney world and I, I i fully support that i'm not i'm not gonna lie i think i want to go to disney world but i also i think i don't want to go to disney world i'm not gonna lie you it's, probably those yeah. things are probably true it's those very mixed both, both of those things yeah standing in a line for a star wars thing wearing a shirt that says the supreme court's dead wrong about abortion could be fun at disney world it, yeah. It was, there was some looks. I mean, there was engagements. There was there was some things. Did I you mean, if, if, did you have to? If mask? the Russell Hunter went down, what y- you would need you would need to vlog. You would have to, <laughs> you'd have to vlog the lines. <laughs> so yeah, you do have to wear a mask indoors. Indoors, and that's only in Disney, by the way. It's not necessarily all in all of Florida. So uh, well, but, certainly not in all of Florida. Yeah. In Disney, yes, you have to wear a mask when you are inside, yeah. but not in lines outside. You, you're fine to not wear a but mask. But boy, did a ton of people wear their masks outside. <laughs> yes, they did, and those are the people that we offended with all of our shirts because there probably wasn't a day where we didn't wear a shirt that was potentially offensive. Oh yeah, every day was because Disney's like yeah. it's a multi-day thing. Oh yeah. oh yeah, and you see the yeah. same people, and I have a mohawk, so everyone's like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> I love your hair." The mohawk guy with the abortion shirt is wearing. A... <laughs> yeah. What was it? So I had uh, defy tyrants I come and take like, it. Yeah, I, have... I had to come. And, I had my come and take it. I had a couple people like that. I had. We have a shirt that that says "Burn the ships," which is a reference to Cortez, and you burn the ships so that you can't go back. You can only move forward. Um, and that was for uh, men's muster, Alex uh, Alex Rodriguez, um, who does a, a men's a, a men's ministry. Um, uh, I wore that. Um, See, I have a shirt that ha- that says Proverbs sixteen eighteen in the uh, LGBTQF flag, oh, and uh, so I thought that was really you know pride comes before destruction, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and I thought that was really clever, but when you wear it people think that you're just like pro gay and there's a Bible yeah. verse for it. <laughs> yeah. And, and then, you're, and then, you're and justifying you, the gayness. Yeah. And, you, and you get a lot of like, uh, you get a lot of like sort of cool shirt, man butt slaps? from, yeah, no, not butt slaps. I've never got a <laughs> oh, butt slap. Oh. Actually, no, I was in new Orleans once and I think I got a butt slap, but <laughs> <laughs> the problem is you were in new Orleans and you think I, it could have been any number. It of was things. the French quarter. And I was like, I'm glad I just got one butt slap. <laughs> But, <laughs> no, but that shirt is is where they someone likes it and they think that you're like pro gay, like Bible pro gay or something, and then they go home and they read the verse and then they're like, oh, oh. so it's, it's like it's a delayed release. But then then I realize people don't go and look at the Bible verses. Sure. The shirt. So <laughs> well, what's wear, great is I don't wear that shirt very often. You have to focus hard on the Noahic covenant during the Pride Month, so that's what yeah. you have to hit hard. So you have to, yeah. you know, celebrate. I, I celebrate the Noahic covenant month as well. I'm very much pro Noahic covenant. Take back the rainbow Ooh. guy. That's right. That's right. Oh, we have a sticker for that. We do have a sticker for that. Yep. 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 I think I not. I mean, not to go del- delving into a deep theological thing, but I think the devil loves that, like to use the rainbow for oh, something. Yeah. So. Just something that it God would weakens, flood the world for, but isn't going to, you know, it also w- weakens wicked. the rainbow itself because the rainbow is literally it's hung in the sky. Cause it's what you do when you hang your bow on the wall, when you're done using it, it's yep. an instrument of war. Yeah. It's what, it's what God hung in the sky was his instrument of war. And I think, I think it just belittles what God hung in the sky. Yeah. They take I'm it. literally going to hang down, hang my bow and not, not rain this down upon you anymore. And we've got it pasted on some, as a, a symbol Purple of sexual hair. licentiousness and pride. So. There's our culture. Boom. And so, so take uh, it don't back. forget everybody. Don't forget everybody. Uh, the Abolition Now Conference uh, going on <laughs> yep. 7th through 9th. Uh, so you I think it's the 6th through 9th. 6th through 9th. I apologize. 5th through the 8th, actually. The eighth. You guys are close. But hey, getting it wrong is getting it right because it gets people thinking. 5th yep. through the 8th, so February 5th through Turns out neither of us are good at math. So, so get to Oklahoma. <laughs> and, if you can uh, come the 6th through the 9th, that's good too. Yep. But uh, 
But no, this has been fun. And uh, I think everybody's going to want to go check out y'all's podcast. And everybody should go buy all of your t-shirts. Yes, especially this month, continuing uh, the, the January theme. Because uh, we, uh, we, we look forward to supporting you guys and what you guys yeah. are doing. And appreciate it. Uh, fighting to make sure we end abortion. Yes. Yeah. I heard Indeed. I heard that if you if you stay through the ninth that Russ is gonna give you a nice little Oklahoma barbecue. Yes, yeah. that's what I heard too. Oh, yeah. I did hear that. Yeah, I'll get into that whole T shirt doesn't like uh T Rex doesn't like push up stuff if you stay through the ninth. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so be, that's one of those insides you see you're laughing because you're just like doesn't make sense why I said that. But then there's that's an inside joke because people are like Oh he will talk about dinosaurs a lot if you stay. Yeah. So stay through the stay stay through the final day and go to an IHOP at two AM. I will I will nice. talk talk a lot That's of dinosaurs awesome. with you. Yeah. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Anyway, thank you guys so much for, for coming on the podcast. Really enjoyed this one and yeah, hope hope people go and check you out. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, and and honestly, James, I just hope you can recover from uh, having to be a part of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys realize if James wasn't on here? What I don't know. We probably never would have ended. <laughs> no, and we're, the things we would have discussed that we're not a part of what we're supposed to be discussed. James, yeah. awful. James is like, and so uh, about the shirts, guys. The yeah. shirts, guys. So can we get back to the gospel? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, James, yeah. for keeping us on on, on point. Yep. Bravo. Yeah. Glad, to pull, glad to play my role. So uh, yeah, um, it's been enjoyable. Yep, yeah. and we will see it on the next episode of the Liberator Podcast, where we are as harsh as truth and as uncompromising as justice. See you next week. <laughs>